riding for Southland in the final. We'll also have the Karen finals tonight. Uh, brilliant riding there and the men's elite elimination race for a short break and uh, it's a big program, about three hours, 51 of racing to uh, get through tonight. It's going to be some fantastic events. A lot of uh, great rides this morning. Amelia Sykes just missing out on the under-19 sprint record of, held by Steph McKenzie. So uh, not in the fastest conditions, but it's hot inside, so if the air pressure is good, let's see what Aaron Gate can do tonight. Juna Nineson. Uh, semi-finals on the track under 19 sprint race one best of three yes good evening everyone and Sykes has gone straight off to the frontier as Dow said in some pretty good form there this morning it's a very good time set both in the pursuits we'll talk about those a little bit later on as Sykes has opened up a decent sort of a gap here on Caitlin Murray rider number 77 there in our programs but it looks like it's going to be fairly clear cut though a bit of a comeback here onto the back wheel but I think going to run out of real estates and Sykes will get herself the uh, tick of approval from the judges just over 13 seconds for the last 200 metres here in this under-19 women's sprints. The first uh, ride of the night, and as Dale said, some big races uh, coming up uh, here tonight. Good mixture of both endurance as well. Well, Amelia Sykes uh, clearly was a class above in qualifying today, Julian, and she carried that through to ride one in the semi-finals. So, Caitlin Murray will have to go back, have a chat with the coach. How can we overcome the form of Amelia Sykes, the national record holder in the individual pursuit. And that's uh, showing her form is just as good in the sprints. We now go on to the under nine, uh, the semi-final number two, Lily Kaywood, Sophie DeVeers, both riders uh, have shown good form and not a lot between them in qualifying this morning. This should be an interesting battle, of course, the tactics. Both riders riding for Waikato Bar Plenty. And of course, once again, this competition reaching the semi-final rounds. This is a best of three competition. As we saw last night there with the riders, a lot of discussion with their coaching staff when they go off the track after each of the events and uh, discuss how they can approach the next rounds. So an opportunity to come back if you don't quite get the tactics so right because it is a very tactical type of race, of course, when it comes to the sprinting. This is where you'll see riders with the experience utilising every inch of the track there. That's what the banking's there for at 43 degrees and 18 on the straights here for the uh, Southland Velodrome. There's a lot of opportunity to be able to utilise that to get the kick off the banking and potentially get that nice extra slingshot to get around the rider or to open a decent sort of a gap without having to burn too much of the matches in the old body. So Lily Kaywood drew the inside position, quite happy to lead at the moment. Sophie De Vez goes, well, you pull up. I'll just take control from the front. Sophie De Vez, very strong. You don't want to give her too much, uh, too many metres in front, but it's good to have some wheel. You can see Kay Wood just sitting off. So she's got something to run at when she decides to make her move into the 200 metre mark. De Vez in control. Now here comes Lily Kay Wood. She gets up onto the hip. She'll relax and use a little bit of the kick out of this corner. If she can get on equal terms, she'll have to kick hard, kick now. But Sophie De Vez... Uh, as we sort of thought and predicted, goes through one up in the best of three. So as we said, they'll head on back now and have those conversations uh, with the coaches to decide what needs to happen there. You can see Cable trying to come uh, around the outside, but uh, had to battle all around that bend, which is not an easy thing to be able to do, just to get your lines right when you're actually going to come on to the rider. So that no doubt will be part of the discussion of when the actual move was made to try and slingshot herself up onto the shoulder of the opposition. So one apiece now here for Sykes and Rees, and that as we now move to our next events, and continuing with the theme of sprints with the under-19 men. OK, Lart, we're up onto the track on the inside, so he will have to lead away up against Waikato's Liam Kavner. Kao Lart, of course, uh, will come into this pretty much as the favourite. Got a smile on his face. You'll be hoping that he uh, doesn't have a brain explosion like he did in the Kieran last night. Of course, I had my money on him, so that was uh, left at the TAB. And um, Kao Lart, he will be, he's still my pick for the sprint competition. I like the young man, he's a former under 17 champion and record holder. 
as that record's been taken from him at the under 17 by the man riding in the next semi final, Jackson Russell. Mikhail La shows all the attributes of being a top sprinter, but he's also a good bunch race rider. He reminds me a lot of Caleb Ewan in style, stature, punchiness. Liam Kavner will be very wary of Kao Lard. He's got the Kieran gloves on, so uh, he's said, well, if we have to mix it up, I don't mind. Liam Kavner just uh, keeping his distance, keeping a little bit higher on the track. Kao Lard doing what he needs to do, just stay low, keep control of the pace from low down. You've got to be careful you don't get caught at too low a pace. If the rider starts to push it above you, you can use the banking to accelerate, and it's harder to wind up from that slow speed when you're down on the pole line or the racing line between the little black line and the red line when the sprinter commits he must stay in that line and the other rider likewise can't come into it as they come in to the bell Liam Kavner trying to force it on the outside Kao Lark now if Liam Kavner can get over the top but Lark's accelerator protected that inside position Kavner out of the seat pushing hard into the hundred but uh, Kavner's not going to give up. He might be able to use the banking if he's got the strength of Kaula too fast from the inside position and takes it. Moves one up. 62.4 kilometres an hour. Tasman, they're sprinting well. They've got Sean Fulton taking out the title last night. Kaula wants to do it tonight. Goes one up in the best of three. Yeah, it's a fine ride there by Lark controlling down the inside. Use that acceleration to quickly get himself up there because at one point Looks like Kavner was about to just get right over top of him, but uh, as Dow said, managed to control that inside lane. The shortest way home, of course, the measuring line. The black line down there at 250 metres. This is your first time viewing the velodrome before here. So he knew that, and once you get into there, you've got a pretty good sort of an advantage. And uh, gets himself the tick of approval for the best of three competition here in the semi-finals. As we now move to Mann versus Russell. Jared Mann of Waikato Bay of Plenty up against his teammates. Jackson Russell here, rider 126, in semi-final number two. So a good match-up here between these two young riders. And, of course, some of these riders, as we've mentioned over the last few days, just stepping up into the under-19 ranks. So Jared Mann on the black helmet on the outside. Jackson Russell. Russell have a little bit more experience than Jared Mann, but Jared Mann very impressive. I think, uh, from memory, second top qualifier. I not even nudged the top spot, but... Uh, and sprinted very well to come back. He was one down in his semi-finals. Took it to three. So he knows Jackson Russell well. Jackson's been racing for a long time. He's got the long socks on. So Liam, as we had Stoddy uh, helping us out this morning, he called it the white socks versus the red socks. So the two riders just keeping a very close eye on each other here as they roll around for the traditional distance of over the three laps, 750 metres for a sprint, uh, regardless of what sort of age group you're in. That's the typical distance in which these riders uh, ride in. Of course, as we've mentioned, they've already been through the qualifying rounds earlier this morning to get to uh, this point. But it's uh, Jackson Russell got a control of things here at the moment. Man is just waiting patiently there, forcing... Russell to try and lift the engines and go for it a bit. Try and get him to go a bit earlier. As you can see, we mentioned about using the banking here. Has man done a good effort with it there coming off the bank to try and give himself a slingshot up onto the shoulder of Russell. He pushes him up onto the red as they come down to the line. Man, he'll take it. And you can thank him very much for that. Going where he is right now is where he made that kick off that banking. That gave him that extra bit of nudge. So he got the momentum to come around the outside and put himself firmly one up in the series. Well, very impressive riding from Jared Mann. I said uh, tactically Jackson Russell had the more experience, but Jared Mann showed some real track craft there. Brilliant performance. They went from Hamilton Boys High School. Is that really coming on as a sprinter? He's learning. Tactically, he's learned a lot, even from the start of this competition. He's watched the way the, the big boys have, have raced. He used the track, just uh, like a Sam Webster or Ethan Mitchell would in that situation so uh, he will just go back rethink think about what tactics jackson russell might bring out in the next ride because jackson will certainly come out with a plan he won't go down without a fight but jared mann great to see him advance he's only been cycling for for a, just a couple of years 
As we look at Nick Kugazu getting ready for the bronze medal ride in the elite men's 4,000 metre individual pursuit. You've just joined us. We've already had two events, the under-19 female and male sprint semi-finals. This is the elite men's individual pursuit final. Nick Kugazu will be up against Regan Goff. And qualifying today, very little between them. Kugazu rode a very impressive 4.14.279. Regan Goff, 4.15.023. And from that standing start, over 4,000 metres. 56.6 kilometres an hour. They are all hoping to go a little bit quicker tonight. Mums are watching, so giving Nick a, a big cheer. And uh, as the Southland crowd will, for sure, he's had an outstanding championships. He's ridden everything, the individual sprints, the kilo, and now into the individual pursuit. Ride for the bronze medal. He's coming to this with a lot of form, as has that man. East Coast, North Island's Regan Goff. As a young fella, he was a very good trampolinist and uh, multiple junior world champion, senior world champion in the team's pursuit. And, uh, a key man, a key cog in the New Zealand team preparing for the Olympic Games. Nick kukuzu has been named in that team as a travelling reserve. Great man to have as backup because he can slot in pretty much any wheel on the team's pursuit. He could also ride three in the team's sprint if he had to. But tonight, it's all about 4,000 metres. Well, I won't ask Julian Innes and lose his money on because uh, they talk about Canterbury being one eye, but down here in Southland, they have the blinkers on both eyes. But Julian, Nick's had a, a fantastic uh, series, and uh, he'll be looking to bring this bronze medal home if he can. Yeah, Nick's very keen indeed to uh, show what he can do here. And as you said, he's had a very consistent performance over the last uh, few days, mixing out between endurance and sprint events. And they've done extremely well there with obviously taking out the kilo the other night with a close on a one minute flat. And it's, uh, and of course, qualifying well through into the sprints, getting through close to the semi-final time and then taking second in the scratch race. But two well-performed riders who have met each other a number of times. So 12 laps underway here. It was for 4,000 metres just to say, 16, as they're underway here for these uh, two riders. They'll get those big gears going. Now, this is going to be interesting, backing it up from this morning. And talking with one or two, they said the conditions are even better than what they were this morning. As we saw, records being broken and PBs being set. But as you said, Dal, very tight between these uh, two riders uh, here. Yeah, not a lot between them at all in qualifying. Kugazu, of course, uh, probably the... Generally, you would say the faster over the first part, but um, just to prove us wrong, Regan Groff's going a little bit quicker over the first 500 at the moment. So Nick has got a big gear on. They both have. They'll be building into their rides. Just to give you an idea of the times, uh, Aaron Gate had a special record attempt in Cambridge a few weeks ago, rode 4.09, he rode 4.08 this morning, and actually, you know, it was warm, but the air pressure was really high, so it was a fantastic ride in those conditions. Mark Stewart said he thinks Gady will go a lot faster tonight, and Mark Stewart himself, we wanted to go faster. So I think we'll see both riders uh, in both finals, all four riders, try and improve on their morning rides. Regan Goff, we'll have a look through the first 1,000 metres, a 107, so it's a good start. Nick Kugazu just a 1.8 seconds down. So Regan Goff's gone out hard, and he's got that beautiful aero position, the head tucked right into the, the hands, keeping as low and as still as possible on the bike. So important in the individual pursuit to stay composed, get going, follow the little black line round the track. 1.9 is the, dis the gap between them. We'll keep an eye on them at the halfway stage, get an idea of what sort of time they might be on for. Regan Goff, 1.38, he's absolutely flying. Just building on his right, he hasn't slowed down. We can hear the uh, lap times being called. Sitting on 55 kilometres an hour. 55.3, Nick Kuzu, 54.3, so a kilometre an hour behind. Regan Goff, Regan Goff is travelling at speed. He's got plenty in the tank. He's had a slightly lighter programme during these championships. But he's a master in the team's pursuit, and he's showing his ability. I remember when he set the New Zealand record as a junior in the individual pursuit, so he's been doing this for a long time. They've gone over the halfway at 2.17, so they're on for a very good ride. Regan Goff. Down the back straight into the 
turn, Kukazu fighting hard, still that gap, it's just widening a little bit, 2.4 seconds, travelling at 56 kilometres an hour, Regan Goff, 2,500 metres into the 4,000 metre journey. Goff still looking composed, hasn't moved, his head hasn't moved a bit, eyes focused. So they'll come up towards the 3,000 metre mark. That'll give us an idea of what sort of time. They're starting to build up towards that 56, 57, or nearly 57 kilometres an hour. Goff goes through, 304, 8.75, two seconds is the gap now to Nick Kirkazoo. He might be uh, just starting to pull it back. He's got a big finish on him, so you've got to be aware he's down to 1.9. 1 1.9, Nick Kirkazoo starting to come back. But he might run out of room. Regan Goff, he is not slowing down. Let's have a look at his lap split. He's still travelling at 56.3. Kirkazoo's picked it up, but he can't get it under that 1.9. Regan Goff, man from East Coast, North Island, in control. Both riders still on top of the big gears. 500 metres to go for Regan Goff. It's just gone out a little bit, so there's going to need to be a big 500 from the Southland man, Nick Kirkazoo, to get... Over the top of Regan Goff on this bronze medal ride. Goff gets the bell, one lap to go. 3.58 at the bell, it's a very good ride from Regan Goff. Nick Kirkazoo, I don't know what his PB is, but he might be pushing that pretty close as well. Goff comes around, coming in towards the finishing straight. He's probably gonna be a little bit outside the time this morning. 4.14, 4.14, 8.34, 54. 56 and a half kilometres an hour for Regan Goff. So Regan Goff, he went faster than his ride this morning. By uh, almost a second, he'll be happy with that, taking the bronze medal. Well, that was a good battle, particularly in the first thousand metres. Nick threw everything into it. Yeah, fine effort by both riders there going out into their pursuit final here for the bronze medal. Setting the benchmark here for some fantastic racing throughout the night uh, here. These guys are involved in a lot of the racing over the week, so it's great to see them still coming out time and time again and putting, laying it down for you here, folks. And as we saw there, Regan improving on his time from this morning, which is impressive effort indeed for both of them to be doing those 4.14s, 4.17s. As we get prepared now, for the ride for the uh, gold medal. Mark Stewart in the Southland Colours, rider number 52, up against the uh, fastest qualifier New Zealand record holder, Aaron Gates in the Auckland Colours. Gate, of course, been in some fine form and that's really just an understatement really over the last uh, six months. His resume is very impressive indeed, both on the road and the track, as Dale mentioned early on, breaking the national record just a matter of weeks or so ago. And then coming out uh, this morning and lowering that even further to get down into under that 410 mark. And that again, it's uh, very impressive indeed and would be rated extremely highly across the world. So mentally preparing themselves, looking at the clocks to go. So the big gears underway for both riders here. Look at the size of those chain rings that these riders are now riding these days. Those have been around for a few years that wouldn't even been considered to have those sorts of size uh, chain rings uh, going on, the sort of massive gears, 115, 120 inch gear. Some riders are riding in these sort of pursuits uh, nowadays as they tend to spend a couple laps just getting into the rhythm. And that's the all important part now, not to be able to burn yourself out too much in that first few laps, just to get it floating along and get on top of it. Well, it is again the big gear. There was word they'll be riding probably around 122 tonight, and uh, you can see the tracks in pretty good condition. It's very warm, so the riders will be happy with that. Don't know what the air pressure is. I didn't check that before we came up into commentary, but Aaron Gate showed it wasn't a problem this morning when he rode that 408, tucked in nicely onto the aero bars head down nice and low Simon Fennell calling his times as he always has done over his whole career one of the, the great coaches looked after Aaron Gates since his days at Auckland Grammar School so Aaron Gates chasing 107 through the first kilometre that's very good for both riders 500th of a second between them so Mark Stewart's come here to race tonight as well 
So Gate, of course, a world track champion, an Olympic team's pursuit medalist. Key cool. figure in the men's team's pursuit team, but uh, he's sort of started to chase the individual pursuit a little bit and has built up to Tokyo, travelling at 54 kilometres an hour, still building up and winding up into this ride. Through the 1500 metres and 138, Gate still 5 hundredths of a second in front of Mark Stewart of Scotland, who's riding for Southland here at these championships. Stewart second in the road race at the national championships behind George Bennett. Quickly switched over to the track, the Commonwealth Games champion. So the gap uh, is still tight, 0.7 between the two. So Garen Gate will like this, having some competition, both focused on their own ride. They're coming up towards the 2,000 metre mark. Let's see what sort of time they're going to stop the clock at. Through the, there we go, 2.08. So they're on for a very good ride. We're on the 4.08 place. We're on record pace. And Gate will keep building on that, as will Mark Stewart. This is a very good performance, Julian. Yes, I'm very impressed here with Mark Stewart. He's certainly putting a bit of a challenge on. It's slowly starting to climb, though, for Gate as he starts to get into each one of these laps here. He pounds on the big gear. He's got him set a record to go for. He wants to try and lift it with every effort he can. He'll be looking for plenty of crowd support, folks. Can we see the New Zealand record lowered once again here in Invercargill? Gate is the man to be able to do it, and Stewart is on a flyer as well with just over two seconds behind. So Aaron Gate, he, uh, he's getting G'd on by the crowd. Simon Vanell's just keeping him controlled at the moment. Gate's got his head down. He just continues to build into his ride. And of course, uh, one of the comments I've seen come through around pads on the track. The UCI changed the rules so you don't have to have pads. They went to having pads in the straight and around the bend. So for the first, I think it was five metres from the start. And then around the bends to no pads. So you don't see the pads on the track anymore in the individual pursuit. But the riders, of course, are being watched by the commissaires. They, if they spend too much time down below the black line, they know where they have to ride on that racing line. As we see Mark Stewart down the home straight, Aaron Gate absolutely flying around as well. 3,200 metres of the four covered. 328. Let's have a look at the split between them. Aaron Gates edged out just a, a little bit more. 57.8 kilometres an hour. He's getting closer and closer towards that 60 kilometres an hour. Remember, that's the average speed from a standing start. Try and do that in your car over the couple of thousand metres. Get the Morris Minor into third gear and see what you can do. Aaron Gate at 30, 57 k an hour. He'll be coming into the last uh, few laps. He'll get two to go next time past his starting point. Simon Fennell just asks him to lift it a little bit more. So the crowd's starting to really feel the New Zealand record coming on here. Aaron Gate, he's absolutely flying. What's he going to be able to produce? He comes down towards the finish. 408-873. 408 873 Just a fraction outside the time this morning. But of course... Uh, that, I think, will go down as the New Zealand record with the electronic timing working. 57.86 kilometres an hour. Aaron Gate, two four eights in one day. Outstanding effort from the man from Auckland, New Zealand representative. He's done it all, but to back it up with two four oh eights over the day here is an outstanding effort to be able to do on any velodrome in the world, let alone here at the New Zealand Championships for Gate, as we see the confirmed results coming through there with Aaron Gate winning it with a 408.873, Mark Stewart the silver, 415.850, and Regan Goff in third for the bronze with a 414.834. But Aaron Gates deserves all the accolades he can get here with an outstanding effort once again here in Southland. He's just continued to come out time and time again on the road and the track and perform at the highest level. Well, certainly one of the superstars of world cycling and I always wonder what would happen if a big pro team picked him up and they threw him into the classics. He has got some horsepower. He's got a motor. He's got plenty of racing to come. He'll be back on the track later on this evening in the elimination race. So next up we've got the bronze medal ride in the junior men's 3,000 metre individual pursuit. Auckland's Joel Douglas will meet Mid-South Canterbury's Jonathan Fish. And uh, we'll just have a look at the qualifying times from this morning. Joel Douglas rode 323.022. Jonathan Fish 323.155. So... About a hundredth and a little bit of a second between them, so we're going to be in for a bit of a nail biter if they've both brought this morning's form to the bronze medal ride. 
Yeah, interesting today. Again, the same sort of names popping up here. Dell with uh, Douglas. Uh, we saw him in action last night, performing extremely well, along with Jonathan Fish. Jack Carswell will be up against uh, Ryan McLeod. So again, names that we're familiar with, not only at this current championships, but also in the earlier days in the junior ranks as they move into these under-19s. Of course, under-19s here in uh, New Zealand. It's been a couple of years in that particular age group before you move up into the elites, such as what we just saw previously there with the likes of the Aaron Gates. And of course, it'll be likes of Aaron Gate and co that'll be keeping an eye on these uh, under-19s. As we've said before, they know that they're hot in their tail and are very keen to push for selection for various competitions as they move their way up through the under-19s. Well, the New Zealand Championship record is held by Finn Fisher Black, 308815. See the championships in Cambridge. He also held the world record, or still has the world record, although there has been a faster time ridden, but I don't think that has yet been ratified by the UCI. American wrote it at 306. But uh, when I checked earlier, it was still listed as Finn Fisher Black's 309 was the world record, although he has gone faster at the national championships with a 308.815. And uh, we saw him put in an outstanding performance to win the national under 23 time trial and post the fastest time of the day at the championships just a couple of weeks ago. He's back on the road. He's not here. He's with his Jumbo Visma team, along with George Bennett in Europe. And uh, I'm sure they'll be keeping a close eye on what their friends and former teammates have been doing over these championships. So uh, just a reminder, Joel Douglas, winning, winner of the scratch race last night, qualified 323.022, 53.196 kilometres an hour. Jonathan Fish, Mid-South Canterbury, 323.155. Fastest time in qualifying, well, he's in the final, of course, Jack Carswell rode 3.17. He's up against Ryan McLeod, who rode a very controlled ride to qualify in 3.21, just making sure he did enough to go through. This is the second ride in the sprint competition. Amelia Sykes, one up against Caitlin Murray. So what can Caitlin Murray do in the best of three? Can she pull one back? So using those endurance events just as a bit of a buffer for these uh, sprinters. If you're new to the sport, they have a set amount of time they try and create for them to recover and get their tactics sorted before they come out for their short and sharp burst over that uh, last uh, lap or so. So Sykes, as we said, one up already in the series, right at number 74. She's leading out, so they've reversed the order. Of course, they do the draw at the start of the sprint uh, competition. And then reverse it for the next round. And then if they need, if they are required to have a third one, if Murray was to take this one out, then they'll uh, do the draw once again. At the moment, good space being allowed there with Murray just sitting off, giving herself that opportunity not to be controlled by the rider, forcing the lead rider to have to look over the shoulder, keep an eye out what's going on. So Sykes opting then to stay nice and low. So she only has to look in the one direction not be up in the middle there and having to swivel the head back and forth. Not too sure what's going on at any time. So she's got it under control for herself as well. But of course the right at the back is slightly higher. A little bit more of an advantage. The bell goes. They can go at any point in time. But they're going to delay this one. Both decide they would like short and sharp one here. I'm not so sure that's going to work to the favour here of Murray. Sykes gets out of the seat and uh, pretty casually manages just to take it there. So... Might suggest it's a sprint, but uh, that one there just taken it a bit differently. But of course the sprint can start at any point in time. We often get asked, do they have to wait to the bow? Do they have to wait to the last 200 metres? The short answer is no. And they can go at any point in time. In fact, uh, many years ago at uh, one of the national championships, I remember seeing uh, one of the riders just go straight out of the blocks in the elite men's, the Gary Anderson days, and, that, and uh, basically just take off and do the three laps a bit like a quick short, short sharp kilo and that to try and beat their opposition. So you've got to be aware, awake at all times. And at that point in time, and that's the tactics have worked for Sykes just to delay things and roll through to give herself two from two. Sophie De Vere's all one up in her semi-final against Lily Kaywood. They would have gone back to the drawing board, talked to their coaches. So Jason Russell, Tim Carswell looking after the Waikato Riders. They train regularly in the Waikato Hub. 
They know each other well. Sophie De Veers. A lot of experience. Let's see what tactics. It's good to see the young sprinters are learning by watching the elite riders at these championships. If we looked at them in the earlier rounds, they were riding very close together, almost on top of one another. Now they're riding these like, uh, like the top sprinters. That's what they need to do. Inside sprint, as we say that, they decide to close up. A little bit of leaning. It's okay. You can do that. If you've got the inside running, you can push the rider outside you up the track. So they're going to try and uh, jump. It's going to be a long sprint. So they started down in turn three. They'll come around to get the bell. So what uh, Lily Kay would going to be able to do, Sophie De Vez just sits in the slipstream at the moment, sitting off nice and patiently. Now she gets out of the seat, kicks hard, but so does Kaywood on the inside, defending the inside position. Now she's got to really fight and kick hard around the bend. Sophie De Vez powering it. She's going to get over the top. She does so, takes it by a will. She'll go through to the final. Two straight rides. So the form from qualifying being carried through. So Amelia Sykes will meet Sophie De Vez in the final. Caitlin Murray, a Lily Kaywood in the ride for the bronze medal. So quite a different uh, approach that time round, making sure that she did get the kick on off the wheel and set off too far and allowed to be controlled uh, by the opposition. And it makes a big difference coming into that uh, finishing straight as we look to the next of our rides continuing with the sprints event 54 the men's under 19 the sprint semi-final with Lart, Kyle Lart of Tasman he's one up in the series up against uh, Liam Kevner here of Waikato Bay of Plenty he'll be followed by Mann and Russell so again as we saw in the previous one the switching around to the order so Kevner down on the inside here with the uh, British flags Helmet on, the Waikato colours, and on the very front, Lart, as we said already, is indicated on the screen with the green marker beside it, indicating he's already won up in this best of three competition. And for the vast majority of riders, they'll be keen to try, and when it comes to this part of the competition, try and take it out two in a row so they can get those legs rested up and get prepared for their respective finals. But as we've seen over the competition uh, yesterday, a few of the riders got pushed to a third ride. Which again, you wouldn't think it would take too much out of them, but at the sort of speeds they're doing, the gears that they're pushing, the large gears they're pushing out there, it does take a fair bit of sting out of them. They've done a lot of training to try and counteract that and deal with that situation. Of course, with some of them with such a heavy program, that could be the difference between whether or not they can make it onto that podium. As Kavner tries to keep Lart uh, up nice and high, try to control him. Lart, though, just going to use the whole fence line. He's decided he's going to go for a flying lap here and get the full advantage of the banking as he slides on off here. He opens half a dozen lengths, and I think the indication of the head dropping from his opposition says it all. Lart will cruise on through, use the track to his full advantage there. Didn't have to put a lot of pressure on the body to do so in the end. Allowed the track to do what it's there for and kicks himself through for two in a row at 64.9k an hour. Kyo Lartz is the first of our riders here to go two up in the series and make himself available for the gold medal rides. Well, Kyo Lartz, he's got a lot of support in the crowd and uh, he's got a big smile on his face. I know he's a little bit annoyed with himself last night. Well, he's going to make up for it tonight, but still plenty of work to do. Who will he meet in the final? Jared Mann. And next he coming up onto the track has the inside. Jackson Russell on the outside. So Tim Carswell, Jason Russell bringing Jackson up onto the track. So Jared Mann's drawn the inside position. And the young boy, young man from Hamilton Boys High School, Jared Mann. Well, he comes to the track. He always wants to learn and listen. And uh, he's just continued to improve. He's only been riding a couple of years. And just continues to get better and better. I'm sure Renee Wolf will be having a little bit of a look at him. He shows the track craft in that last race. Jackson Russell just uh, sitting close to the back wheel, trying to force him to look left, right. Jared Mann, he's uh, got him. Probably where he wants him right now, Russell, in the middle of the track. So he can stay a little bit above him. Jared Mann's just still got him in sight, so he can still see him. 
So a different sprint to the last one. They know each other well from their bunch and match racing. The man probably showing quite the experience of the other riders. Normally you'd see them drop down in this, in this situation to the inside of the track. So they just uh, keep an eye on them, keep the rider above them, match their pace. He's leaving the south wide open. Jackson Russell dives underneath. He'll dive underneath. He'll come up. Well, try and give him a bit of a nudge and intimidate him. Jared Manjo just looks nice and relaxed. He's got the belt. So high on the track. Jackson, uh, Jackson Russell trying to just uh, hold it up. He's got a big jump. He's got a lot of explosive speed. So he may be using that. And uh, he's opened up a bit of a gap. Left the sprint really late. And that, that's going to be enough to go through. It's 1-1. So Jackson Russell played to his strengths. He knows if he can slow it, stall it, use the jump. So it's going to go to the third ride. He was a nice move there by Jackson Russell. You saw him. He didn't commit himself. He went back up the track, and that took the sting out of man who was starting to look at trying to wind it on up, and it took the speed off him, and he had to back it off a little bit. And, of course, uh, with these fixed-wheel machines, you do that and then have to go again. That can just be a bit of an effort. And Russell made full advantage of being able to do that and use that track to his full advantage to get the gap on his opposition, doing it very, very well to even up things. And as we said, best of three competition. These guys will be back out once again, back to the drawing boards for the two of them to discuss the options going into that third ride. A lot of track craft required when it comes to the old sprinting. A lot of practice and a lot of lot looking at the video clips online and so forth and that there on checking out how different riders compete i know some of these guys analyze each other within an inch of their lives to see some of the common traits that they how they tactically approach some of these races so on the 19 men's individual pursuit semi-final the ride for the bronze medal coming up onto the track we're looking at Jonathan Fish just uh, getting his last drink bottle. He's not panicking, rubbing the hands together. He's up against Joel Douglas and Graham Hun, the Cycling New Zealand High Performance Development Manager, said to me last night, Joel Douglas, he's the real deal. Wrote a brilliant scratch race. But Jonathan Fish, the man in his corner, standing over there talking to him, keeping him calm. Olympics Games silver medalist. So sorry, it's Ryan McLeod. Oh. Yeah, there we go. We had the wrong graphic up. It's there we. Go. It is Jonathan Fish. So just ignore the graphic on the screen if you're sitting at home. It's Jonathan Fish versus Joel Douglas. So Joel Douglas. Starting in the front straight, a fraction of a second faster in qualifying. If you've just joined us on Sky Sport next, it's 323.022 for Douglas, 323.155. So we're getting down to the small numbers. Both young men will want this bronze medal. Hayden Rolston's had a chat to Jonathan Fish. Rolston, Olympic Games silver medalist in this very event, the individual pursuit. And so, medal winner in the team's pursuit. Does a fantastic job helping the young men and women in Mid-South Canterbury. They run a great program down there. Joel Douglas just uh, waiting, just relaxing. Got to get the all clear from the timers. No worrying about the things on the scoreboard. We know we've got the right riders on the track. That's the main thing. Joel Douglas, Jonathan Fish. So 3,000 metres for these riders. Again, they'll have their times they'll be looking to go towards uh, here. They would have their schedules worked out with their coaches. But also now, of course, the big difference, knowing that they've got that opposition to try and beat. So we may see a mixture of both the use of the schedule and also the coaches giving an indication if they're up or down on their opposition. 
And we'll discuss that, how fast they need to go out to maintain the pace against the opposition and give them a bit of a wind up. Some of them will go out faster than what they usually would and just blow the mind a bit of the opposition there. So a good smooth start by the looks of it. The Commissaires are quite happy. They're the race referees over at each of the starting points. They would have raised the flag if there was any sort of an issue. If any rider tried to get off too early, etc. Any uh, problems with the bikes? But no, everyone looks straight into their technique. And it's a technique which uh, you would think was relatively easy to do, but it uh, takes a lot of training to be able to keep the upper body nice and straight, nice and solid up there. So a number of riders will do a lot of uh, core body exercises there just to try and maintain, keep that head in place. As you'll see some of them tucking their heads right down inside the handlebars as we look to Fish giving us a good example of that there. They'll spend a lot of time analysing, getting the right position set up on the bike. And they can do it to a certain point because, of course, there is a number of regulations that are also um, put in place by the UCI, the International Cycling Body. So you might uh, see on the inside of the track here, these bikes each night are being weighed. And they're only allowed to uh, be a certain sort of a weight, and as well as the distance, more importantly, of the seat and those, those handlebars. We go back a number of years, there was the Superman look that was uh, around for a little while there with Graham O'Brien and that breaking world records. And then they've, over the years, just adjusted things constantly there to ensure that everyone has, has an even playing field. But they'll push it to the max to get the best aerodynamic advantage they can. Jonathan Fish riding very controlled. We'll keep an eye out what comes up at the 1500 metre mark. Joel Douglas, though, he's built into the ride, just a edge slightly in front now. Jonathan Fish will be uh, keeping an eye on what Hayden Ralston says to him. 0 0.19 between them. 0.19 of a second. They was fraction between them in qualifying. 0 0.3. At the moment, so uh, over the 1500 metre mark, both riders now fully into their ride, still building their speed a little bit. They've got to hang on over the last uh, part of this race, particularly the last 500 metres. You've got to have something in the tank to bring it home. Joel Douglas just up, uh, turning up the heat, goes out to 0 0.7. Jonathan Fish will have to try and answer that. You never want to get too far behind. So Joel Douglas just he's got the advantage. Myron Simpson in his corner calling the times at the 2,000 metre mark, 2.17. And the gap is 1.062 seconds. Jonathan Fish has got a fair bit of work to do. Douglas inside the last 1,000 metres of the 3,000 metre journey. He's travelling nicely. Nice controlled ride. Jonathan Fish, though, he won't go down. He'll fight hard all the way to the line. And he's still in this race, 1.2 seconds down. Joel Douglas of Auckland. Jonathan Fish, Mid-South Canterbury. Brought it back a little bit. So Jonathan Fish, I know he's got a big finish on him. Hayden Rolson will be encouraging both riders. 500 metres to go. It's 0.8 of a second between them. Jonathan Fish, now you can see him really starting to lean on those aero bars, putting his back into it. 0.5. Fish is trying to come back. Joel Douglas trying to hang on. Bell goes. Douglas by 0.3. Jonathan Fish, can he pull something out in the last 250? Down the back straight, Douglas. 4042. It's going to be close as they go to the line. It's almost going to be who throws the bike. They cross the line. Joel Douglas by 0.112 of a second. Oh, Jonathan Fish. 323-410. Taken it by. 0.112 of a second. Jonathan Fish, well, we said he had a big finish on the last 500. He listened to his coach, Hayden Ralston, answered the call, takes the bronze medal, the 323. Yeah, perfectly run right there by the man Jonathan Fish. We knew he's got a very fast finish on him, both on the road and on the track, and he used that to his full advantage there. As you said, Dow waited patiently there to get the call to start to really lift it. That would have been part of their game plan to where to actually start to really lift it up. Not get too nervous by the fact that you were down on the opposition. So often we see some of these young riders just get a bit stressed by the fact that the other rider could be a couple of seconds up on them. But he just maintained it, stayed with the schedule, stayed with the program and then lifted it where he'd been required, where he had trained time and time again, as we now get prepared for the final for the gold medal, and a very good one indeed with Jack uh, Carswell, fastest qualifier for Waikato Bay of Plenty. He's in the home straights. 
He'll be up against the well-performed Ryan McLeod of Canterbury on the back straights. 3,000 metres in front of them. And in a few moments' time, we'll see who will be crowns the under-19 men's 3,000 metre individual pursuit champion. So Jack Cars will qualify, 317.756. McLeod, 321.855. And McLeod concentrating. Jack Carswell. Underway, the big effort. You can see the cheeks puffing out as he gets that gear going. Ryan McLeod, he uh, rode just did enough today in qualifying to qualify to make it through to the final. So what sort of plan has Hamish Ferguson got for him? How fast is he going to make him go out? Ryan McLeod, of course, now working full time and... Uh, Doing the landscape gardening, it's always a big transition when you start to work full time and still try to be an athlete, takes a bit of adjusting. But he's come to these championships with some real, real form. Carswell, we know, will start extremely fast. He goes out to a slight lead in the first 500 metres, the first couple of laps. He's got 1.2 at the moment, but Ryan McLeod, he just cont he'll continue to build on his ride. Jack Carswell will know he's got a big finish. I know there's a gap between them in qualifying. But we don't know how much Ryan McLeod held back tonight in this final. You can't hold back at all. You've got to put everything out there. You can't leave the track being able to blow out some candles. You've got to let all the matches, given that everything, Jack Carswell, he's always this fast starter. Of course, as an under-17, he rode the world's best time over 2,000 metres. And uh, he'll be thinking about that world record at some stage for the three as he develops in the under-19 competition his dad Tim Carswell his mum Fiona in the infield watching Ryan McLeod he's got a fair bit of work to do 2.6 seconds down but McLeod he does finish strongly he came home I think uh, in the last couple of laps he was at fifth and he got himself up into the second position to get into the gold medal ride so Jack Carswell 1500 metres 140 53.9 kilometres an hour Hamish Ferguson has a little look up. He's going to ask Ryan McLeod to start lifting it shortly. 3.4 is the gap, so Jack Carswell continues to build into the ride. 1750 metres covered. We watch the clock tick by Jack Carswell. Travelling well, 54k an hour in control. Three seconds is the gap. It's going to be a, a big ask now for... Ryan McLeod to come back over the last thousand metres, but he can do it. We've seen him pull out big finishes before, but Jack Carswell chasing him. He can almost see him now as he comes around into the home straight. McLeod heads down into the back straight. Jack Carswell's got the bit between his teeth. He wants this ride tonight. Carswell looking good, smooth on the bike. Head just a little bit higher than what we saw them with the likes of Aaron Gay, but he's got the mouth open. He's on top of the gear. He's not slowing down. 55.11, so he's still building into the ride. 500 metres to go. Now McLeod, as we do, he's starting to uh, really wind it up. He's got five seconds to pull back in two laps. So Jack Carswell almost need to explode from there. He's got the mouth wide open. He's gasping. Jack Carswell, what sort of time is he going to produce tonight? He sees McLeod in front of him, and he's chasing him. Absolutely chasing him, Carswell. Carswell's going after this gold medal. He's got it in the bag, but he wants a good time. 313-911. Very good ride. Jack Carswell takes out the under-19 men's individual pursuit. He's happy with that. You'd have to be pretty happy riding that 313-911. First year in the under-19 category. That's a fantastic performance. Well, Julian, he did absolutely nothing wrong. Jack Carswell, he looked good, just confirming the results. Jack Carswell, 313-911. McLeod, 320-600. Jonathan Fish taking the bronze on 323. Joel Douglas put up a great battle, finishes fourth, 323-522. Here's your champion, Jack Carswell. Well, I know he's got a lot of followers over there in Belgium. We went over there a couple of years ago. I think he started five races, one four, and punched it in the other one. Yeah, she was an impressive uh, final indeed here for the gold medal ride. Carswell, a very fine rider. Very gr good to see those two riders make it to the final. They were certainly deserved uh, riders to challenge for that gold medal. 
And interesting to watch the technique between the two. And that is we watch Carswood is nose and doing the drifting up towards the red line as he come into the straights and then dropping back down into the black measuring line there into the bends. And then we saw McLeod sticking to the traditional down on the measuring line the entire way. So you'll see just little slight variations between the riders as they approach their events as to what works best for them. The different research would prove you know, various pros and cons either way, but obviously working in the favour of the man who's in some hot form, Carswell here. He's already picked up a medal there in the scratch race a few nights ago, and that would have been disappointed with the fact that they allowed the rider to get off the front towards the end of that, and they've come back though in what would be considered one of the glamour events, the individual pursuit. There's some very impressive names over the years that have made their way onto the trophy for the individual pursuit finals. And as we've mentioned, some of these riders and that then head off overseas and are riding on the trade teams. And they'll be being watched very carefully here on Sky Sport Next, ensuring that uh, they keep an eye on these riders from throughout the world, including these New Zealand championships, to see if they might just give them a tap on the shoulder and give them that opportunity to come over in some of their development squads and ultimately into the highest level. These riders will be very aware of that. And of course, for these junior under 19s, each year these national championships have been the breeding ground to determine whether or not you can make it to the Junior World Championships. Unfortunately, of course, postponed last year in Cairo and Egypt due to the uh, world situation with the pandemic at this point in time. The fingers are still crossed that they may still go ahead. And these riders, something to look forward to and challenge for to get selected. As we go back to the sprints with Jared Mann and uh, Jackson Russell. One apiece at this point in time. Man the, down in the black helmets. The smaller of the two figures. The tall figure there, of course, of Jackson Russell. He rode it to perfection before to take the uh, sting out of the legs of his opposition. Again, underway over the traditional three laps, 750 metres. As they uh, roll through down into the back straights, they'll make their way around, keeping a very close eye on each other. But as we said earlier tonight, go at any point in time. What they'll also be doing, particularly the, the front ri uh, rider there, be just tuned in to any sounds, any sudden movements from behind. They'll look for anything that will give them that opportunity to pick up on the rider coming around. In the days of the, so the outdoor tracks, of course, they can use the advantage of seeing a lot of the shadows of the riders as well. So all sorts of tricks, anything that will help them determine if a rider is about to make a bit of a move. Meanwhile, the rider at the back there, Russell will be watching, watching for the tenseness in the legs to go on. And all of a sudden realising that man's going to go as he slips underneath. Does it very quickly, Jackson. You've got to give him that. He's very quick at making his moves as he gets into the last 250 metres. He's trying to wind it up, but man's got the advantage of the banking. Has he, though? Because they go shoulder to shoulder. This is going to come down to who had the extra wheat mix for breakfast this morning. As they go to the line, this will determine the medal. As they go for it on the inside, oh, could be man. Man may have thrown the bike at the last moment to get up on him. We're going to have to wait for the third umpire on that particular one. But, man, is this a great semi-final for the under-19 men to determine who's going to secure these medals. Well, great sprinting. Both riders tactically riding very good races. Jared Mann tactically much better that time. It's whether he was uh, just patient enough and got the slingshot off the banking. As Julian said, has he thrown the bike? We'll wait for the photo finish. I know last night there was a pixel between, uh, I think it was the bronze medal ride also. That was very, very close. There we go, Jared Mann has taken it, so he goes through to the gold medal ride. Well, congratulations, Jared Mann. Making it through to the under-19 sprint final. And your first uh, elite and under-19 at national championships. Well, Hamilton Boys High School, they'll be on the edge of their seats. So Just gives himself a little bit of a smile. As well, I've got through to the final. So just a reminder that should now see Lart up against uh, Jared Mann for that uh, gold medal ride. Jackson Russell will be joined by Liam Kevner, the two Waikato riders to ride for that uh, bronze medal. And we'll see that later in the competition. And once again, it'll be uh, best of three. That's fantastic sprinting between the two. Not giving an inch uh, either rider there. Just that throw that bike to the line. Matter of mere inches in it there as the next of our rides are getting fed. Looks like we might be getting ready for some of the Kierans. 
Yeah, Julian, if you just joined us on Sky Sport Next, uh, welcome to the coverage of this day three, session six of the Vantage Windows and Doors Elite and Under-19 National Track Championships. We've just seen semi-finals of the Under-19 Men's and Women's Sprint. We now move into the Women's Elite Karen final for the seventh through to 12th place, and then we'll have the A final, one through six. Men's Karen final, Under-19 Women's Sprint final, Elite Men's Elimination, Under-19... Women's and men's sprint final, second rides, third ride if, we're, if required. Of course, uh, we've seen that happen last night. Final tour races on the programs. The women's under 19 scratch race over seven and a half kilometres. And the men's under 19 points race, 20 kilometres, sprint every 10 laps. So big program in front of us. So settle in. You've got your TV dinner. Put your feet up and uh, watch some great track cycling from the Vantage Windows and Doors. Elite and under 19. Track Cycling National Championships on Sky Sport next. Dale Woodford and Julian Ineson in the commentary. As we wait for the riders to, uh, they would have drawn their position. Glenn Thompson, former Commonwealth Games points race champion on the electric motorbike around the back. He will bring that around. If you haven't seen a Karen before, it's a reasonably straightforward sort of event. The motorbike comes around. He'll pick up the riders. They've drawn their positions on the track, one through six or seven or eight, depending on how many in the race. The first lap, you must hold that position. So if you're drawn one, you must sit in behind the motorbike. Two and three, four, five, six, etc. The motorbike comes through at 30 kilometres an hour. It will drop them off with three laps to go. You'll see the motorbike pull off the track. That's doing 50 kilometres an hour at that point of time. And then, well, as my good mate Robbie Dale would say, we on like Donkey Kong for the next three laps. It's uh, a long way to go out, a long way to lead out. And that you'll get an idea. The first of the finals, the B final for... Seven through ten, six laps in total. So we'll just run through the field. Erin Downey, Gurdon Inventor, Nicole Marshall, Maya Anderson, Olivia King, Rahana Dunn in the B final. The A final, Olivia Ray, who's already taken a couple of titles at these championships. Samantha Donnelly, who rode a fantastic uh, heat this morning to get to the final. Emma Cumming, Tyler Green, Sean Fulton, Elise Andrews. The defending champion is Sean Fulton. And don't forget, of course, if you are tuned in online, we've got the live chats. We'd love to hear from where everybody's uh, watching this uh, fantastic uh, coverage. If you've got any questions or comments or shout-outs for your riders, just chuck them on there. But uh, quite intrigued to see where everyone's uh, watching, what couch they're sitting on, where in the country or overseas that they are. As uh, we mentioned earlier on, a number of people from throughout the world uh, tuned into this car coverage uh, yesterday. And it's been a fantastic uh, coverage indeed for some top efforts from across all the various uh, age groups uh, here over the last few days and of course still racing all day tomorrow and that with big day ahead we start moving to some of the team's events of course from 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and then again in the afternoon from three o'clock so that's a different uh, timing for that last uh, session of course that will include the elite men's uh, points race and of course with Corvin Strong Southland man and of course the current world champion so Tomo on the back straight, uh, as Dale said, just waiting uh, now. He's received all the advice from Jesse Willis and co. The top, they, they're up and coming big time sprinters. They would have told him what to do. They're always full of advice for him. He'll take that on board as he rolls through here for these uh, riders. They get the nod from the commissaires. As Terry Jide and co. give their riders just their last bit of instructions. There's been plenty of discussion as to how to approach this particular event. As I said, the final for 7th to 12th place. The B final for the Women's Elite uh, Kieran. So Glenn gets the motorbike. He's got the all clear from the start of the gun will go. And the riders will make their way into position behind the motorbike. Of course, after one lap, you can then challenge, change position. But at no time are you allowed to pass the motorbike. You have to wait till it pulls off the track. If you do pass the back wheel of the motorbike, I've seen the race restarted. I've seen the riders DQ'd. So you must stay behind the motorbike. Sometimes you'll see a rider back off, give themselves a little bit of space. So if you've seen it a few years ago, the right motorbike pulled off with two and a half, and uh, pretty much the sprint was full gas from there. The tactics have changed a little bit in the Kieran. Three laps. It's uh, changed. The way riders are approaching the Karen. This will give you a good idea. This is the final for 7th through to 12th place. 
Welcome on board, uh, Marnie. And it's uh, online there from Christchurch, keeping a close eye on, of course, the likes of Aaron Downey, one of the Canterbury riders out here. He's been a frequent visitor over the years into the Deep South, so she'll know this track extremely well. He's had some very good performances uh, throughout the uh, junior ranks. There's the two Southland riders head on to the front, going shoulder to shoulder here as we head down the back straight. So here, Nicole Marsh will be a bit disappointed not to make it to the day final. She's a fine sprinter. That's so she'll now try and control things onto the front. She rose, rises up towards the top just to make life a bit harder for them. Tinky Venter now coming up onto the outside of her. Downey also trying to put a squeeze through there. There's a little bit of a door opening. She took it. Here comes the Waikato Bayer. Plenty riders now starting to wind things up with Meyer Anderson. Anderson, and she's taking her teammate there with her done. As they come round onto the outside, they've got rid of a few of them as they head down the back straight. It might be only for 7th or 12th place, but they've got a lot of pride. They want to take this out, and it looks like it's going to be an all-affair for Waikato Bay of Plenty as they go to the line. Maya Anderson will take that out from Olivia King. We'll wait for the confirmation of the rest of the results there, but Maya taking out the win there for 7th to 12th here in this Women's Elites Karen final. The precursor to the gold medal rides. A fine ride there by Maya. Again, was well performed across uh, national championships. Always keen to give it a nudge off the front. And you get the, all sorts of riders with their different approaches. And there should be one of those ones who said we're keen to always just to have a bit of a go off the front. Others quite keen just to always to sit back and wait and ride other riders' uh, races or just do the sprint at the finish if there's that opportunity. So this makes it so exciting when they've got the unknown factor of some of those riders that will do the charge. As they'll wind on down, confirmation as we called. Anderson, King and Marshall, your top three, followed by Downey, Dunn and Venter. So the ride now for first to sixth, we're starting to get prepared up onto the track. And again, they would have done their draw to uh, come up onto the track. Drawing number one, you'd be right down on the inside and closest to the fence line will be at number six. You will see larger fields sometimes at some of the carnivals. Now, uh, down here in South, and I think we've had about a dozen at one point in some of these uh, Kieran races. They're very much shoulder to shoulder, but uh, it's certainly at this sort of a level, it is pretty stock standard to have the half dozen and a good representation of all the various centres here, Dow. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll run through the field. Olivia Ray, Samantha Donnelly. Ray in the colours of Auckland, Donnelly Canterbury, Emma Cummings, Southland, Taylor Green, Southland, Sean Fulton, Tasman, the defending champion. Elise Andrews in the colours of Waikato. It looks like Elise Andrews has drawn number one on the inside. Emma Cumming, looks like Cumming will be in three. Tyler Green in two. Sean Fulton in four. Olivia Ray towards the top of the track. So Sean Fulton looking very relaxed, I'm sure. That's on the outside. Elise Andrews, Sean Fulton, Tyler Green, Emma Cumming. Samantha Donnelly, Olivia Ray just all lined up for this elite woman's Karen final. Glenn Thompson gets the motorbike underway. So let's see who wants it. Sean Fulton does. She's uh, won the 250 time trial, the 500 time trial, the sprints. So here we go. Elise Andrews, she won't mind drawing number one. She quite likes riding from the front. Fifth ranked Kieran Ryder in the world. That's what earned her her selection to the Olympic Games. You must be in the, I think, top uh, 10 in the world. And uh, she, of course, in fifth. Emma Cumming, great to see her coming back into international competition. So Elise Andrews decides to prove me wrong and goes right to the back of the field, pulls up the track. I think she's a little bit wary of Olivia, Olivia Ray. Slots on the wheel of Olivia Ray. Ray doesn't mind uh, going the hard way, using a little bit of the track if she needs to. Use her road strength. Remember, she's the National Criterium Champion, the Scratch Race Champion on the track. Also mixing it up in the sprints and here in the Kieran final. A couple of the sprinters in the other final. Sean Fulton just backs off a little bit, leaves herself a bit of room. Emma Cumming also looking over her shoulder. The motorbike pulls off. There's three to go, so now it starts to get a little bit tense. Tyler Green's on the front. 
Emma Cummings, Sean Fulton has a look. He sees Olivia Ray over her shoulder. Donnelly's just sitting nice and patiently on the wheel of Sean Fulton. She's decided I'll glue myself to Fulton's wheel. If I get the right run, all things going well. That'll drag me through for a medal. Olivia Ray wins. Elise Andrews going to make the big move. We're watching Tyler Green lead them down the back. It's great to see young Tyler Green. There we go, Emma Cummings going well. I'm going to wind it up, but Tyler Green responds straight away. Now Sean Fulton's going to use the kick off the banking you get here. Donnelly's glued to the wheel. There's Elise Andrews starting to go around the outside. They come out of turn uh, number two. Sean Fulton in control on the front. Here comes uh, Olivia Ray around the outside. Sean Fulton's going to take the clean sweep. She defends the Karen title and does it, almost cruising. What a performance. Sammy Donnelly, wow, what a ride by the young Canterbury rider, Road Smart. That'll make mum and dad happy sitting on the front row of the, of the seats down here in the stadium. Sean Fulton. Well, she's coming to these championships. I know I said it earlier in the competition. Graham Hun has said through this year, her work ethic, her commitment has been second to none and she has got the results at these national championships. The clean sweep of sprint events. Ladies and gentlemen, as she comes around, Tasman, Sean Fulton, give her a big round of applause. Well, we had all the medalists from the sprints uh, earlier on the competition taking part into that grand final, and it proved to be the case. And at the end, when you see the likes of Sean Fulton taking out outstanding ride by Sammy Donnelly, saw the slight gap opened up and managed to squeeze her way through, pushing Andrews into the bronze medal. Ray coming home in fourth, Green in fifth, and coming securing the sixth place across the line there. But no doubt about it, the Tasman rider is in some hot form here once again proving that she's come here to do the business as we get prepared for the next of our Kieran rides as we move to the men. And again, a good mix here with Canterbury, Southland, Waikato Bay of Plenty. Very, very strong centres involved in this next round of competition. 7th to 12th final. Dylan Day, Sebastian Lip of Canterbury. Aiden Jack of Southlands, Louis Hodgkinson of Southlands, Jaden Fleming, Waikato Bay of Plenty, number 61, Patrick Clancy, Waikato. So again, these riders, just as in the uh, previous event, been through a few rounds just to get to this point of the competition. This is the ride off for 7th to 12th. And some strong riders in here. An interesting one to try and call. There was one particular favourite, I think there's a few options. You can see Patrick Clancy in there, Dow, and that's uh, missing out on that opportunity through to the final. But then again, when you look at who's made it to the final, she's a tough one to try and to have made it through to the A1. Oh, I think absolutely, Julian. It's, uh, it probably goes as the form would expect. The, the A final's got the A riders. These guys are knocking on the door, but just not quite there yet. Dylan Day, Sebastian Lip, two young up and comers from Canterbury, Hayden Jack from Southland. Lewis Hodgkinson's come out of Wellington, but moved down to Southland. Jaden Fleming's come from a BMX background. Patrick Clancy's come through the program in Cambridge and is continuing to improve all the time. So, yeah, some, some real uh, yeah, up-and-coming talent uh, of this. I think Jaden Fleming may have some real potential from his BMX background. He's got amazing kick. He's just got to get the track craft and acceleration. He sits there in that fourth position. So the riders just deciding just to follow each other nice and smoothly at this point in time. No one really looking to do anything too silly as they leave a few gaps, a couple of them towards the front just to give themselves that opportunity to make the move. When someone comes around the shoulder, they get onto the train and drag themselves around. The Southland rider, Louis Hodgkinson, starting to get a bit of a nudge at the back there, but he's a long way back. Oh, one of the Canterbury riders getting a bit of a push on out. As we move into it, Hayden Jackie in the Southland Colours now starts to hit onto the front. A couple of others looking nice and relaxed with it. They're more than happy for him to take over as the motorbike as they head down the back straight. Patrick Clancy sitting in about second wheel, but then his teammate goes around the outside as they start to wind things on up. So one lap to go now, 250 metres, and it looks like Clancy on the front. Have they got the legs to get onto him? They're starting to make up some big pressure onto him as they come to the line. It's going to be a tight one between the Waikato riders and the surge to the line. 
sees one of them get themselves right up. Nothing could be Clancy that taken on out. Come flying on home after his teammate was given a few extra lengths and potentially was going to take it out. But Clancy, as I suggested at the start, there would be one of the stronger riders coming into this one. It'll be bittersweet for him, missing out on that opportunity in that A final, but he takes out seventh here in the country in the elite men's Kieran final. Well, Patrick shouldn't be unhappy with that performance. Uh, he rode well on the heats. It's always tough to get through when you're up against some of the best riders in the world. And uh, Patrick Clancy, the experience, you're always all the better for it. Jaden Fleming rode a very good ride, led it out. Clancy, just uh, on this track, you do get that run between halfway between turn three and four. You get the sort of the g-force of the banking it helps you accelerate if you've got the the legs and uh, the, sort of the form to carry it through it often helps you roll over the top but of course you're covering a few more meters so he did well and uh, i know his mum and dad are in the crowd watching so they can take a lot of pride in what patrick's produced on the track this evening and of course everybody from uh, the nursery the Clementine cafe up there in cambridge would be pretty happy as well A final coming up, first through to sixth. Who wants to be the National Karen Champion? Sprint Champion, Sam Webster's there. Sam Dakin, Bradley Knipe in the Colours of Southland. Cullen Saunders, he's seen as a teammate from Tasman. Sean Fulton win it. He looked very good. He cruised through to the final. Jackson Ogles made it through as well, as has Jordan Castle. I hope Ross has made it back from his mountain bike ride. He's uh, come down from Ashurst to watch Jordan. Dakins are in the crowd as well. I know Callum Saunders' his mum and dad are here, and I think grandparents as well. So this is a nail biter. It's going to be tight. Put your seat belts on. Don't get too far forward on your seat because these boys, they will hit some serious speed. Let's have a look. Who's drawing where? Callum Saunders is at the bottom of the track. Sam Dakin sits outside him. Sam Webster's right at the fence. Bradley Knight sits inside. Jordan Castle's inside Webster. Bradley Knight, Jackson Ogle, Sam Dakin, Callum Saunders. Martin Barra, the New Zealand High Performance Director. Looking after Sam Dakin. Well, this is certainly anybody's race. We will be calling it live here on Sky Sport next. Glenn Thompson brings the motorbike round. You've seen it in the other races. They slot into their positions. They can change after one full lap. All riders pushed away. Jackson Ogle blows the cheeks out. He's still the junior sprint record holder. And uh, good to see him coming back to form. He'll be delighted to make this A final. Callum Saunders stormed onto the stage at the Hong Kong World Cup last year, winning the Kieran final. Well, two years, well, 2019 now. But Callum Saunders gets that glates a light tuck. Well, it is the neck glates a tuck. Sitting in behind the bike, just trying to stay as aero and as narrow as possible. Speed will be building up slowly. And let's see who's going to make the move. Everyone's fairly happy at the moment. Sam Webster right at the back. He'll want to keep out of trouble. It's the way he rides these. He relies on his speed and his position. Jordan Castle. Cruise through to the final as well. Looked very, very good doing so. Callum Saunders, I thought, looked the most comfortable. Looked like he was just in third gear the whole way through his semi-final. Sam Dakin sits second wheel, backs off. Callum Saunders has a look. Jackson Ogle's looking. Bradley Knight, they're all starting to look. Three to go. When's Jordan Castle going to start to make a move around the outside and move up a little? But Sam Dakin puts his wheel on the outside of Jordan Castle. Bradley Knight stuck there. Callum Saunders just controlling it at the front. There comes Sam Dakin. Dakin decides, well, it's two to go. I'm just going to start opening it up. He won't be going full throttle. He'll be going about 85% just controlling things. Bradley Knight outside of him. Jackson Ogle inside of him, pushing hard, trying to get the, the door to open. It's opened a little bit. Dakin, though, kicks about a bike length clear through the 200-metre mark. Sam Dakin of Auckland. He might be clearing out from them. Callum Saunders in third place. Oh, it's going to Jackson Ogle's going to try and get up. Can he get over the top of Sam Dakin? They go to the line. Oh, it's tight. Very tight. Dakin on the inside's taken it. That's from my view. Sam Dakin takes the Karen title. Provisionally, Jackson Ogle right up there for that third, second and third position. They're all looking up at the scoreboard. We'll be waiting. 
She was a tight one. And as you'd expect, you had the top four in the sprints uh, from earlier in the competition involved here. And that throw to the line could be the difference once again. But I'm with you, Dow. The inside looked like it could have just held on. But the riders, as you can tell from their faces, no one's just too sure yet. Waiting for that confirmation. That's where the commissaires now will be straight to the video footage before they confirm up onto the boards exactly how it's fallen, but a throw to the line by those two or three riders as they hit onto that finishing straight. Man, did some of those riders come from a long way back. Well, Sam Dakin, he rode the perfect race, and uh, I think he's got it quite comfortably. It's for the miners. Callum Saunders contract, contract, congratulating him. Absolutely, Sam Dakin. He's, in my view, he's taken the Karen title. Very good performance, very good ride, controlled ride. But we're waiting. We're waiting for the miners. Riders congratulating each other. That's because I don't think they quite know who's got it yet. It was interesting to see, of course, those high speeds trying to come around the outside. Not an easy thing to do as uh, Bradley Knight there. He was well positioned. And then all of a sudden he got the squeeze on there and he couldn't just stay out two or three wide and went straight backwards on it there due to the fact of these big guys on the massive big gears. If you just don't quite get the right line, it can be all over within a second, just as the door can open for that mere second and allowed a few of them to get through and have a run for the line there, as we saw, that last 50-odd metres. Obviously very tight indeed, as the commissaires have got their faces pinned up against the screen, watching there to see what the split looks like. We've had dead heats before, of course, down here at the Velodrome, but it is a possibility. But uh, I'm going with you, Dale, still. I think down that inside, it's that minor placing there. It will be interesting to see to determine who's going to be up on the podium later on this evening for the presentations. Oh, we look at the bike, the close-up there of Sam Dakin's chain ring. It's over 60, he's got the little sprocket on the back. And uh, the wide shot of the stadium, riders warming up, there's Corbin Strong right down there to the right of your picture. And the Southland Shorts just warming up, sitting there getting ready for the elimination. And, uh, just waiting. I think confirmation's on the scoreboard. Hopefully it'll come up on our screen. There we go. Sam Dakin's confirmed. Callan Saunders, Jackson Ogle taking the bronze medal. He'll be absolutely delighted with that. Jordan Castle, Sam Webster, Bradley Knight. It was tight between all six of them. Well, congratulations, Sam Dakin. Takes the gold. Callan Saunders, the silver. And Jackson Ogle, the bronze. A great shot there of the top uh, three. Great ride there by Ogle, and that, uh, he was the man that saw the door just slightly open, and he got a good run there towards the finish and was challenging for that gold medal. And I'll lock that in and get that ready for later on for those uh, presentations. We've seen a, number of, a couple of presentation rounds uh, later on this evening. Still plenty of racing still to come as we continue through the process of the uh, sprints, of course, coming up very shortly as well as the men's elite uh, elimination. A bit of a short break after the uh, second ride of the under-19 men's uh, sprint. If a third ride is required, all well, those will be straight into those uh, presentations. As riders come on up in preparation for these uh, sprints. Good mix in the program here tonight are those, if you just joined us, all the endurance and the uh, sprint events. As the Canterbury Riders now up onto the line with uh, Murray and up against uh, Kay Woods. Murray Rider 77, Kay Wood 91, Canterbury versus Waikato Bay of Plenty. This is the first ride of the best of three for the bronze medal for the under 19 sprints. Both riders just opting just to roll down onto the apron of the track. That's that light blue area there. Then they'll move themselves back up onto the official part of the track. So the commissaries just keep an eye on it, making sure that they actually utilise the track and not down in that uh, apron area too much. They'll often just do it, though, at the very start as they get the big gears just rolling. So the Canterbury rider, and given the job to do the leading out at this point in time. Meanwhile, Kay Wood just starting to wind things up slightly on the outside. Would have learned a lot from the earlier competition. We'll try now to put things into play and ratify how she approaches things as she goes to the front. So Lily Kaywood has decided it's time she wants to lead on out there and she's opening a decent sort of a gap. And it looks like more of a pursuit as they go with the last 250 odd metres. 
And uh, Kaywood opens up a decent sort of a gap. She knows she's got a decent one here, so she'll just cruise herself through to the line. Knows full well it's best of three, so she gets that one relatively straightforward. Judges will be happy. That'll be one of their simplest ones for the night compared to the one just previous there. No camera required. So Kaywood's best of three goes one up in the series. Oh, some good, very good sprinting. And, uh, of course, earlier, if you just joined us, Aaron Gate rode a very impressive 4.08 to win the individual pursuit. That's the third fastest time in history. Of course, uh, the American Lambie rode a 4.06. The Italian Garnier a 4.01. Gates 4.08 makes it the third fastest time in the world. So a fantastic ride from Aaron Gate earlier in the program. If you missed it, you'll be able to go back later on and watch it on Sky Sport Next. So on our YouTube channel, you can go back and tune in. Thanks very much for your company. We're coming to you live from the SIT Zero Fees Velodrome here in Invercargill. Beautiful sporting facility. The track, even though it was built in 2006, in absolutely first-class condition for these Vantage Windows and Doors Elite and Under-19 National Track Championships. This is the gold medal final, bet number 59 on our program. Sophie De Vez up against the fastest qualifier, the National Individual Pursuit record holder, Amelia Sykes. She has been sprinting exceptionally well. So what can Sophie De Vez do against the Canterbury rider? She'll have a plan, you can be sure of that. Talk to Tim Carswell. Um, well, what do I do against Amelia Sykes? Amelia Sykes won't be too worried. Just moves down onto the inside. So it's nice and close. Would have had plenty of instruction from her coach on how to ride this. She knows she's the fastest over the 200 metres. It's quite uh, reasonably comfortable in qualifying, but of course match sprinting. Those gaps can change in a blink of an eye. Point your wheel the wrong way up the track. Look the wrong way, and uh, it can be good night, nurse. And all over and done with in a few seconds. The two up-and-coming young riders... Amelia Sykes, so well, she can do it all. A lot like Elise Andrews at the same age. Sprints, pursuits, rides the scratch race, and decides, well, I'll just go to the front. I've got the strength, I've got the speed. Comes into the 200, she's sitting uh, just about a bike length clear, so De Vez has got plenty to run at if she's got the legs. Clicks into the slipstream now, has she got the strength to get up past the uh, hip and over the top of Amelia Sykes, they come down the line, Amelia Sykes though, a bike length clear, goes one up in the gold medal ride. Well as expected, Amelia Sykes just keeps improving, getting faster, riding with a lot of confidence and a lot of confidence in her own ability to take control of the race from the front. They'll be back for their second ride. Next on the program is the bronze medal ride for the under-19 men's sprint semi-final. Jackson Russell up against his teammate Liam Kavner. Kavner will come out in the blue, red and white helmet. Jackson Russell will probably be in his traditional white. He'll be wearing his white glasses, the long white socks. That's how we'll be able to see them apart as we look at Amelia Sykes, Sophie DeVeers, just uh, congratulating each other. Or maybe Sophie De Vez says, I'm going to get you next time. This is day three, session six of the Vantage Windows and Doors Elite and Under-19 National Track Championships. Dale Woodford and Junior Leonineson in the commentary. Thanks very much for joining us on Sky Sport Next. And here in the stadium in Invercargill, good to see a big crowd in for tonight's racing. As Julie mentioned earlier, one of the, well, one of the most exciting races to watch is coming up, the men's elimination. And there we've got the under-19 men's points race, the women's under-19 scratch race, and some great sprinting still to come. As we see Liam Kavner being pushed up onto the track by Tim Carswell, the performance hub coach in the Waikato Bay of Plenty. Jackson Russell being pushed up by his dad, Jason. He's one of the assistant coaches at the hub and uh, works under Tim, developing his career as a coach. It's a good point, of course, uh, where we've got a number of these riders involved in these hubs uh, throughout the country, being selected, being tapped on the shoulder, noted at uh, various events. 
given the opportunity to build on their potential cycling career. But it's not just about the, what they do on the bike. A number of them you know, lots of advice and guidance on some of the life skills, etc. and that as well. So they'll know each other, a lot of these uh, hub riders. They do some competitions in amongst each other throughout the country and, of course, in amongst their own uh, hubs. And that's on a regular basis throughout the year. Well, what's good with these, uh, a lot of the young riders, under 17, under 15s, under 19s, is they do multiple disciplines. You know, they ride the road, the track, they pursuit, they sprint, they mountain bike. I know Maui Morrison, one of our top up-and-coming riders in the Waikato, he's uh, raced national, won one national titles at BMX, mountain biking, road and track. And you know, that's the all-round skill set you need these days to, to succeed in cycling. You can't just be that one-dimensional rider. And uh, these riders... Jackson Russell, if you look at him, he's probably one of the skinniest leg sprinters we'll see. But boy, he's a former record holder in the under 17 200 metres sprint competition. Well, Jackson's he's, he's the record holder in that. Uh, he took it off Kao La. So he is the 200 metre under 17 sprint record holder from memory, and uh, I'm pretty sure he still holds it. Kavner decides well I'll wind up from the bottom Jackson sitting nice and high Lem Kavner down the back now Jackson Russell gets out of the saddle swings on the handlebars grits the teeth as he got enough in the legs to get over the top of Liam Kavner Kavner's left it uh, he left it late Jackson Russell usually likes that but Liam Kavner he goes one up well he did it quite comfortably as well so Jackson Russell will go back to uh, the drawing board got another chance to even things up in this race for the bronze medal. It's a great thing about it, you get a second chance, best of three. So as those riders come on down, they'll jump straight onto the rollers, etc. and that there, just to get a bit of that lactic acid out of the legs. As we said, they'll be discussing now the options available to them going into the next round. They may come out and try and repeat a similar sort of tactic, we often do see that, particularly these age groups uh, here, as they try and just refine it and get it uh, just right, because as it often it doesn't quite just go to the plan. So a lot of thought process goes into it, but of course, as we've said before, we come out with all the plans in the world, but it can change just like that, because the opposition, uh, they've got their own plan in mind, as we now see the finalists coming out here for the gold medal ride. Smiling assassin Kyo Lart there on the outsides there in the Tasman colours up against uh, Jared Mann. This is going to be a very good one indeed uh, considering what we've already seen here tonight when it came to the uh, semi-final time. And that both of these riders proven to be a very quick indeed. Now what can they now produce? Can they manage to outwit the other rider? Because that's what it's all about. So you can have all the strength, all the speed in the world but you've got to get the tactics right. As we've already seen early on in this uh, program, where some of the potentially faster rider that we would have expected to take a win or two, and that hasn't quite just got the tactic there right, and the opposition has managed to take out the win. So they'll ride a patient one here now, and try and put those tactics into mode, and it looks like one of those is going to be to try and ease off the pace a wee bit. We can do a standstill, but no, they've opted, no thanks. Thinking about it for a moment there, man, as he eased things on off, he wanted to force Lard onto the front, which of course uh, each of the riders will have a preference, depending on the type of track it is, if it's got long or short straights. Same with the bends, they'll determine whether or not this is the sort of track they like to ride from the front, or try and get the drop on the rider from the rear of the field. Now Lard, doing a good effort to here, just laying off by those two or three bike links, giving himself the opportunity to go from either side, and he's staying just above the eye line, of the opposition there, so he's got that chance to drop down onto him. He's got the confidence, and that's a big thing in it here. As you can see it, he's out, left a big gap, but he's allowed for it to happen there, and he drops himself down, and the momentum alone will be enough to get himself the win here as he rolls off the front, and it is completely blown man apart here. It was all about coming off that banking, and again, he saves the leagues doing so and ensures that he gets himself a very clear cut to win there. So using that track to the full advantage there, you can see him winding up high onto the track, and that there gave himself the slingshot nicely off, and man, really wouldn't have mattered how fast he was, wouldn't be able to respond being lower on the track. Folks, would you give it up for Kyle Lart taking first blood here in the gold medal ride of the under-19 men's sprints. 
So as many would expect, Kao Lart with his experience over Jared Mann, he just showed it, didn't have to burn too many matches. Jared Mann, he won't make that mistake again, he learns quickly. But if you're going to control it from the front, you've got to know where your man is and you've got to know your what speed because uh, as they're coming off the banking, you've got to maintain your speed at one. He had the opportunity to go hard, go early when he had the gap in the distance with Kao Lart at the top. And Kao Lart just giving him a few little pointers and um, they come off the track. And Jared Mann pretty delighted to be in the final, but he'll go have a ch chat to his coach. He knows he's uh, got a tough competitor to overcome in Kao La, but you never take anything for granted in match sprinting. As we can see the men's field rolling around for the elimination. There's the start list. It's a big start list as well. Aaron Gate, Hugo Jones, Josh Scott, Regan Goff, Corbin Strong, Hamish Keast, Jacob Willis, Mark Stewart, Nick Kugazoo, Tom Sexton, Keegan Hornblow, Daniel Bridgewater, Kian Watts, Zach Williams, Campbell Stewart, Kane Croup, George Jackson, So the field up onto the track here for the elimination. All the officials just getting into position. A reminder, of course, online there, Sky Sport next. If you have the live chat, if you want to do a shout out for your riders, let us know where you're watching the competition from as the uh, commissaires get these riders uh, organised into position. Very good sized field, but more importantly, it's got a lot of calibre sitting inside it here. Uh, for these uh, riders, the elimination will be a fast and furious event. If you haven't seen one before, also known as Devil Take the Hindmost, often ridden at the uh, carnival events and is being introduced into the younger age groups at the national championships as a, a race this year as well. Of course, those uh, age group championships not too far away in March in Cambridge for the uh, junior under 15, 17s and the Masters riders. The elimination also forms part of the four races that are raced over the day for the Omnium competition as well, which of course we will see in action at the Olympic Games and Real Championships. It is always very fast and furious, that one, that's for sure, the elimination where you've got to be well positioned. I mean, we talk often about positioning, placing yourself in that right spot at the best time. Well, this race here in particular is one that uh, you have to do that uh, there because if you get caught out at the back of the field, then, as the race name suggests, you are eliminated. So we'll see down on the insides of the Dow. We'll get the call from the commissaires to let us know who are the riders that it gets the nod from the uh, judges as to not making it through. And those riders will be well aware, of course, of their race numbers and will be listing out for that. So there'll be some close ones, no doubt. As the field crews on through. Looks like Keystale South at the moment in the danger zone there, along with a couple of the Waikato Bay of Plenty riders. Look out down the inside, though. You can hit the wall as Wellington riders bring them on through. With the bow indicating every second lap, they'll go through for the sprint, if you like, to try and stay out of the contention of being eliminated. Regan Goff, another man in the danger area there, as they start to spread wide into it. There's a few of them in contention to get the chop this time. 5-0, 5-0. Rider 5-0-50, Jacob Willis uh, getting eliminated that time. So Willis of Southlands getting caught out down on that inside, that danger zone there. It is Southland now back onto the front and one of the Tasman riders sitting off the back of the field here would be Hornblow. He's in a bit of a danger area as is still Keaston. He's a Canterbury rider right down on the inside. This could be another tight one for the judges. 48, rider 48. Hamish Keister of Southland. Hamish Keister of Southland, number 48, eliminated there. 
He was just coming off like the New Zealand Cycle Classic. As a number of these riders uh, uh, have done a lot of road campaigning. It's a big events such as the Tour of Southlands, so like so the Aaron Gates of this world, the Corbin Strongs, etc. And Hornblow is still the danger man at the back there. And the Tasman Colours, meanwhile, some of the big contenders rolling at the front. 56. Rider 56, uh, Keegan Hornblow, as he suggested, he's been dicing with death there for a while. As the field just stretches out a little bit uh, here, as you can see the experience of some of the other riders. Like Regan Goff now, after being in that danger zone early on, has moved himself into the mid mark there. He's in the yellowy colours there of the East Coast, North Island. Aaron Gate in the Auckland colours uh, towards the front, no surprise there. Corman Strong down on the insides. Hugo Jones also in the mix there. More importantly, at the back, what's going to happen this time? 42. Oh, we gave him the commentator's curse. Hugo Jones getting caught out. He was on the inside from Canterbury, right of 42. And they just did that surge to the line there, and he got chopped. He was pretty safe there with about uh, 15 metres out. But as so often is the case, it's the shortest way home, but all of a sudden, right, as a swamp you onto the line, and you can get caught out very quickly. Tom Sexton down on the inside there for the Southland uh, Colours. That's Waikato and Canterbury at the back with the likes of Josh Scott. 57. Right of 57, Daniel Bridgewater from Waikato Bay of Plenty. Right, it's been uh, shifted down to Southland recently, been based here with the hub. It's been pretty well performed in the uh, carnivals leading into this, but getting caught out fairly early on. Because such a large uh, field here makes it a very long event for these uh, riders, particularly those who are going to back it up after doing the pursuit finals. Mark Stewart out there, Nick Kirkazoo, Sexton, Hornblow, Bridgewater, Watts, Williams. 62. 62. Zach Williams, number 62, Waikato Bay of Plenty eliminated. So as I said, Kian Watts out there, Campbell Stewart, of course, number 63. Keep a close eye out for him. Former world champion, George Jackson out there, rider 67 from Wellington, of course, took out the scratch race a few nights ago, and he's done a lot of work on the front, and he's back there again. But it's Josh Scott towards the rear of the field at this moment with a contingent from Southland and the West Coast. 43. And it is Josh Scott of Canterbury. Just didn't have the legs that time round to do the surge. Of course, every little surge takes that bit of energy, so you've got to be constantly placing yourself into a position where you can try and look after the legs as much as you can. Even at this high pace, you can believe it or not, there's actually a bit of saving of energy in that mid midfield area there, and that's what the, some of those uh, top contenders are trying to do. They can't, can't continue to try and surge from the rear of the field. That just takes too much out of the body. 64. Khan Groove, 64, just getting the chop there. Sexton was lucky from south and he did a quick wee surge to the line there. And Khan, unfortunately, was the recipient of that there and misses out this time. So a lot of south and colour in there. West Coast, North Island, East Coast there, still Regan Goff. Nick Kirkazoo, after a heavy programme. Now starting to head towards the rear of the group. He's going to have to make a bit of a kick towards the front. 53. And it is Kirkazoo, right of 53. Fourth in the pursuit earlier this evening. Course winner of the kilo. As now the group now really starting to reduce in ranks here. And riders have to very quickly readjust their sights as to where they need to be positioned. After the big bunch, you can hide away, but as we start getting now down to about eight or nine riders, all of a sudden the tactics can change aplenty for these riders. There's a bit of a surge around the outside, and all of a sudden you can find yourself at the rear of the group. 67. Rider 67, George Jackson of Wellington. 67 getting eliminated this time round after a fine effort so early on. He did a lot of work on the front. Just getting caught out though with the kick to the line as I saw a few of the riders just throw the bike to the uh, line, such as Mark Stewart, the man from Scotland now in the Southland colours. Tom Sexton, he's cruising about there towards the rear of the group at this point in time as well. Regan Goff comes around onto the outside there in the East Coast colours. 54. And it is rider number 54, Tom Sexton. 
Part of the New Zealand endurance squad gets himself eliminated. We're down to six riders here. And there's a few names we've hardly mentioned because they've been hidden away. One of those would be Corbin Strong. Sitting up in about third or fourth wheel. He has time to have a bit of a look around, deciding which wheel he's going to follow. Now it's time they're going to get themselves right to the front because Gate and Co are starting to make their moves here. Mark Stewart goes on to the front of the race. Corbin Strong on the outside of him. 63. Rider 63, Campbell Stewart eliminated. So Campbell Stewart, that was a big threat for the finish here. They know he's got a very fast finish. So a few of these riders will be very relieved, very relieved there. That's Campbell Stewart getting the call from the judges. Meanwhile, the group continues to get reduced all the time. Aaron Gate, he's had a big program of racing here with that pursuit already breaking the national record, but he's still managing to hover about in here. 60. Right, a 6060. Khan Watts just hyping up the crowd a bit. That's him eliminated now. As it looks like we've got Auckland, East Coast, North Island with Regan Goff. Aaron Gate, the Aucklander. Waikato right Bay of Plenty. Southland in amongst the mix there. Mark Stewart, Corbin Strong. We're down to our four riders here. As they roll on through, they go shoulder to shoulder. Gate now starts to make himself available at the front. Regan Goff in a bit of trouble down the insides. 45. Right of 45, Regan Goff eliminated. We are down to the final three. Now they start match sprinting. It's the deep south against the far north here. Auckland versus Southland. Aaron Gate on the front, the Olympian. Mark Stewart, a Commonwealth Games champion. Corbin Strong, the current real points race champion. As they head down into the back straight, the two Southlanders are doing battle as they come up onto Gate. This could be a tight one here. Who's got the legs on it as they go to the line? 52. Right of 52 eliminated. Mark Stewart's gone. He'll secure the bronze medal. Gate continues on. Corbin Strong trying to get up onto his wheel. Auckland and Southland. Come on, folks, make some noise here. These are two of the world's best riders out on the track at the moment. Can Gate hold out strong? The answer's going to be no. Corbin Strong comes around the outside after a patient ride. Corbin Strong of Southland has time to give the way to the local crowd and he'll take out the elite men's elimination over Aaron Gates and Mark Stewart. What a fantastic effort indeed. We talked about positioning where he did that throughout the entire race, looked after the legs, and when it was required, the World Points Race Champion comes home to take out the elimination. Folks, put your hands together for Corwin Strong of Southlands. Oh, Corbin will be over the moon with that in front of his home crowd to take out the win. The confirmed results, Corbin Strong takes the gold medal from Aaron Gate from Auckland with the silver. Mark Stewart of Southlands gets the bronze medal. And what was a stacked field of top contenders for this elimination. A very hard one to try and take out as the winner comes down the straight again, folks. Put your hands together for Corbin Strong of Southlands, your national champion for 2021 in the elite men's elimination. Well, these guys do a lot of training together, a lot of time on the bike, on the road and on the track in various uh, teams, both in their national squads and various uh, trade teams together. But when it comes to the competition, they love to get out there and give it absolutely everything towards each other and get the bragging rights uh, back in the training camps. And of course, we're going to see those sort of riders there in contention on Saturday afternoon when it comes to the final events of the competition where we'll see the elite men's uh, points race to so expect to see and hear those same names mentioned. So there'll be a lot of relief also on the shoulders of uh, Corbin Strong to take out uh, the win there. Of course, a lot of expectation coming down uh, to your home turf to ride in the national championships, but uh, he's a young man that's well used to the competition and to the pressure, just takes it on boards. Does what he needs to do with it there in the head space and uh, comes out here with a very positive ride, very patient ride, as we said. As you can see, one or two of those other riders, just feeling the effects a little bit, I would suggest, uh, of the uh, pursuits, and who can blame them? And Gate, again, backing it up, though, to end up on the podium. Real class material, that's for sure. 
after doing a couple of 408s over the day with his uh, individual pursuit to secure that uh, silver medal. Because Mark Stewart's well performed in recent times as well. And it's uh, on the road with the Road National Championships and then transferring to the fixed wheel machine. Well, that should bring us uh, back into the sprints very shortly here for the women's under 19 sprints which will be their second ride of the competition. Also got coming up a bit of a short break after that. And then if a third ride is required, we'll go to that before the first of the medal ceremonies of the evening. Following that will be the events uh, 60 and 61, the final two events of the night, which will be the under-19 women's uh, scratch race. Over 7.5 kilometres. And the men's under 19 uh, points race uh, final over 20 kilometres. So the riders utilising the warm up arena down on the inside of the velodrome here. Of course, at the SIT Zero Fees Velodrome here in Southland and in Invercargill. Of course, New Zealand's first ever indoor velodrome. 2006 officially opens. And the Prime Minister of the time, Helen Clark. A number of dignitaries uh, attending the official opening on that evening, and it's seen a lot of records uh, set ever since, both uh, nationally and international records as well, across all the divisions. And you get that opportunity if you check out the Heritage Trail around the outside of the uh, velodrome here. A number of those records are being updated at the moment. Thanks to the team from Vital Signs here in South and do a great job. They're also in behind uh, the Fight for Yellow Tour that's coming up very shortly. And some of these riders will be transferring from the fixed wheel machines to their road machines to take on that particular tour. It's a two-day tour held around Southland as they'll prepare for the age group road nationals in Rotorua. You can check online for that one there, the fights for Yellow Tour. So multiple disciplines as we've mentioned tonight for a lot of these riders uh, mountain biking and uh, road bikes and track racing just to mix it up depending on what time in the season it is for a number of these endurance riders just coming off a lot of uh, road racing but just fantastic to see racing actually happening of course with the state of the world at this point in time a number of countries unfortunately can't even do a competition such as this you know, there's a a lot of envy around the world as uh, people see the sport uh, such as cycling being uh, held here and we're very privileged to be able to do so. And the organising team have done a great job of having the backup plans uh, for the competition. Don't forget of course the live chat as well. You can jump on there. Let us know where you're sitting at home tonight watching uh, from. Got any queries, any shout outs for your particular riders uh, there? Let us know. You can see last night, a number of people from across the globe uh, tuned in to the racing here in Invercargill. Welcome along. Special welcome to those uh, people here in the stadium tonight for their first time. I know there's a few newcomers to the sport, uh, kids getting involved, and that family's coming along and checking it out. So special welcome along to you. I hope you're enjoying the track racing that you're seeing here. Bit of inspiration to get out there and give it a go. And of course, plenty of opportunity at all the velodromes around the country. Just go check in with your local clubs. And I know uh, the vast majority have some sort of development programs available, holiday programs out there. And that's where, when you look back into the history of a number of these riders, was where they all started from. They want to come down with their various uh, schools and had a bit of a go at their tracks or the road racing. And uh, some of them have gone on then to the extreme of right through to World Championships, Olympic Games. A good example of that, likes uh, Nick Kirkazoo, one that come down for as part of Otatara School here in Southland. And just, just continued in a look back ever since, going right through to that endurance squad. And there's, as I said, a number of riders that that's where they've started from. As Dale mentioned early on, a few coming out of uh, BMXing as a background. And you can often see that when it comes to the sprinters uh, of the sports, where a few of them, that's where they've based themselves out of. Ice skating was also another, another sport that uh, a few have crossed over from over the years, particularly, again, for the uh, sprinting competition. Of course, uh, in recent times, 
number of athletes also transferring or just mixing it up a wee bit uh, from the likes of the sports of rowing and uh, cycling. And of course, one of the best examples of that is uh, Hamish Bond, multiple world champion in the rowing and of course taking out records and national titles on the uh, track and also on the road. Of course, just contested recently at the Road Nationals, finishing fourth in the time trial. As it looks like, we're all just about set here to bring on the next of the rides uh, here for the event 59, the under-19 uh, women's sprints final, the bronze medal ride between Caitlin Namari and Lee Kaywoods. As you can see on the screen, the uh, yellow, uh, sorry, the green marker beside uh, Lily indicating that she's already won up in the competition. This is best of three, of course. Getting to this point of the uh, sprints and that when they start getting into semi-finals, finals, they get those opportunities to try and come back and the implement a plan that will do the right thing to get them to the top of the podium. So Kaywood with the advantage. Of being one up. It's the bronze medal rides race two. Here at these advantage windows and doors. Age group, sorry, elite and under 19 national championships. The age group a few weeks away yet. So the Canterbury rider being forced to the front. Caitlin Murray. And these are a couple of lengths uh, there to the following uh, K Woods who's happy just to stay on the lower reaches of the track as we've talked uh, a bit here tonight of course those angles are certainly worth being utilized you want to sit down that bottom there you're just using raw strength just to get going but with that banking you can get that to use to your advantage you can, you can see the Waikato rider just keeping the Canterbury rider up a bit but now it's just going to be a straight out time trial similar to what we saw earlier. She's just decided, well, I managed to do it earlier on. I got myself a good uh, 10 links on it. I'm just going to try the same again. And it looks like it's going to play in the favour of Kaywood. And so he'll go two up in the competition and be the first name to be added to the podium here in the under-19 women's sprints. Lily Kaywood over Caitlin Murray of Canterbury. Murray, Caitlin Murray did a really good job to get into the final road well in the semis and uh, I know she had a big fall and it's coming back from injury so uh, well done to her just uh, not quite the legs on this occasion so uh, in around 10 minutes time we will have high performance sprint coach former world champion Renee Wolf joining us in the commentary just to Give us his thoughts, uh, not only on the sprinting, but the overall of the meeting. Welcome along to those uh, watching the online version here, the live coverage of it here. I see a few people now from the Gold Coast uh, tuned in to it. Great to have you uh, tuned in and watching. And I see a few a bit of banter going on about predictions of who's going to win which of the races. So Amelia Sykes won up in the ride for the gold medal. This is the second race up against Sophie Devers. Amelia Sykes, as we mentioned earlier in the commentary here at the Advantage Windows and Doors Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships. Coming to you from the SIT Zero Fees Velodrome in Invercargill, Dale Woodford, Julian Ineson in the commentary position uh, in the stadium and, of course, on Sky Sport next. So Amelia Sykes, the individual pursuit champion and record holder, has looked fairly untroubled, it was the top qualifier just outside the time of Steph McKenzie's New Zealand record. And, uh, she's looked very comfortable in these sprints, hasn't looked like she's needed to get out of really second gear. But we know there will be a plan. Sophie Devers will be thinking about what can she do and so she decides to take control of the race and takes uh, tries to get to the front, tries to muscle away but of course, on the inside, Amelia Sykes goes, well, just fight back. If you want to come around me, you're going to have to take the long way. I won't let you pass. Amelia Sykes of Canterbury is going to add the sprint title to her pursuit title. Takes the gold medal in two straight rides. Well, her championship just gets better. Amelia Sykes, the gold medal over Sophie Devers from Waikato Bay of Plenty. 
Your national sprint champion, Amelia Sykes. Well, she looked extremely good, not troubled at all. Was certainly the most impressive this morning in qualifying. I think if the conditions had have been that bit better, she would have uh, gone very close to, well, she nearly did break that record. She may have broke it if the air pressure was a little lower, and that's a long-standing record of Steph McKenzie. So the ride, second ride for the bronze medal. Jackson Russell, Liam Kavner. Liam Kavner one up. He's in the red, white and blue helmet. He's got a few fans in the crowd, a few online watching us on Sky Sport next. Jackson Russell. So what can he do against Liam Kavner? Jackson uh, stepping up into the under 19s. Hasn't been intimidated at all by moving up from the under 17 into the under 19s in this competition. So he decides he'll just control it from the front. Liam Kavner, Jackson Russell, Jackson Russell as well. I know my strengths and I'm pretty quick from a standing start, but Liam Kavner, he left it very late last time. And I thought it might have played into the hands of Jackson Russell, but Kavner out jumped him. It's not easy to do. So Liam Kavner with maybe the upper hand in this match sprint competition, but Jackson Russell will do everything he possibly can to stay alive. He's leading it out. They'll be coming into the bell. He's watching. He's riding like the pro sprinters, controlling the position on the track, looking one way over his shoulder. Now he ducks into the racing line, so he's committed to the sprint. He was out of the saddle, but Kavner on equal terms at the 100, rolls over the top of him as he got the strength to get right over the top. Russell's fighting back hard on the inside. Lem Kavner, he takes the bronze medal. Lem Kavner, 2-0 over Jackson Russell. Well, he had to work for it. He had to take the long way round, cover a few more metres, but just too much strength. And uh, top speed, 60 kilometres an hour, 11.9. Not too bad when you look at where they really started the sprint from. So Len Kavner takes the bronze medal. We'll see him on the podium after, well, a little while in this competition. Still plenty of racing to come here at the Vantage Windows and Doors. Leading under 19 national track championships with the gold medal ride and the under 19 men's sprint, their second ride. Kaula, one up. We might need three. Then we'll have the award presentations for all the finals uh, this evening. We're going to be joined by Rene Wolf as well in the commentary to give his thoughts on the championships. Then we'll have the under 19, a woman's scratch race, seven and a half kilometres, an easy race to follow, even if you don't know anything about cycling. It's just the first rider across the line will win. And the men's under 19 points race will be the final event on the program. Kao Lart in the colours of Tasman has drawn the inside. He will lead away. Jared Mann, the young man who has stepped up into the final, really his first full-on national, certainly at the elite level. He's only been riding for a couple of years. Kao Lart, well, I think he's been around. He's been around a long time. Great young man. He's a real pleasure to talk to, deal with on and off the bike. He's always wanting to learn. He's always wanting to race. And uh, he's got a big future. It reminds me of a lot of those nuggety little sprinters. Robert McEwen, Caleb Ewan. He's on the track. And uh, he's got a big future in front of him. He keeps developing. You know, he made a big mistake last night in the care, and he's corrected that tonight. But Jared Mann, he's going, well, you've made one mistake. I'm going to see if I can pressure you into another one. Kola doesn't mind getting knocked around, bumping around. Mann's trying to pressure him on the steep banking here. Young Jared Mann, he's uh, not been riding for too many years. He's from Hamilton, he rides for Hamilton Boys High. Kola just goes, oh, I'm just going to see what sort of time I can crank out tonight. I'm going to go hard from the top of the bank, and Jared Mann saw him all the way out there. He goes, well, I'll go hard on the inside. I'm going to chase you. Well, Kao Lard, he's put his foot down at the 200 metre mark. Here he goes down the back straight. He kicks into 100. He's looking for a good time in this 200. Jared Mann's out of it. He's going to have to settle for the silver. But Kao Lard kicks. He goes all the way home. What sort of time has he done? We will look at the clock when it comes up. Well, that was just power sprinting. 2-0. He has a look. It's 10-7-09. 10 7 for Kao Lart. That's a very impressive time over the last 200 metres, but Kyo Lart takes out the national title, folks.
He's uh, full of confidence. That's what you expect as a sprinter. They love it. They get out there and they just love to race hard. And he's uh, proven once again why he's one of the fastest men out there. But 10.709, Dal, that is an impressive speed at 67k in a final here. Yeah, just outside the championship record of Jackson Ogle, 10.518, and of course the New Zealand record, Bradley Knight, 10.223, which he did in Argyle, Switzerland. Great ride by Kyle. Uh, the family's in the crowd, they'll be happy. He's got a smile on his face. So some great racing. We'll be getting ourselves ready for the medal presentations. So stick with us. Uh, five presentations for the titles decided so far in the Vantage Windows and Doors Elite and Under-19 National Track Championships. Rene Wolf will be joining me when he comes up here. He's come, I can see him at the door. He's coming in. So uh, we'll get Renee Wolf into the commentary position and uh, settle him down. So joining me is Irene Wolf, the high performance sprint coach, head sprint coach for Cycling New Zealand. Irene, uh, welcome to the commentary position. You've enjoyed the championship so far? Oh, it's really, really nice to be uh, down here in Invercargill and uh, seeing awesome competition and seeing really, really strong riding from riders all over the country. So yeah, happy to be here. Well, you're the sprint coach, but overall there's been some outstanding riders across all disciplines. Who's impressed you the most? Um, it's really, really hard to, uh, to define that, but obviously um, we have some, some riders who are um, delivering outstanding world performances um, in their special discipline, but we're also having riders um, who are delivering performance through the code of discipline. So, for an example, Emilia uh, Sykes, performed really really well in the sprint tournament but also won the um won the the pursuit with a new national record for the junior so um yeah pretty pretty exciting and a young rider like that we saw elise andrews who's the world record holder for the 2000 meter individual pursuit now she's our sprint rider at the olympic games at what stage do you sort of think riders should go well now i'm going to specialize a little bit um, that's that's an individual decision for for everybody. But um, obviously, if you if you have the aim to go for uh, junior world championships, um, you definitely need to need to prepare that properly um, in your discipline. Otherwise, it's it's a really really tough competition out there in the world. The rest of the world, you know, we've seen COVID. We've seen the disruption to everybody's programs. Uh, you're from Germany what's happening in other countries as their teams try and pair for the Olympic Games? Um, it's, as we said, it's really, really different all over the world. We have countries where the sport has an outstanding uh, position where they just train and can train. Obviously, athletes are affected by COVID. Um, we have countries where everything is shut down and athletes just need to see to survive. So it's, it's really, really different. Um, and we are definitely in a really lucky position to um, train, run competitions, uh, uh, prepare our athletes for different competitions and using those, those letters to step up um, so that we hopefully in the, in the near future can race internationally again. You lost uh, the big man in the team sprint, Southland's favourite son, Eddie Dawkins, Sam Dakins slotted in. Are you happy with how the team's progressing? Um, oh, definitely. Uh, to, to use a person and, and an athlete as, as Eddie is, is really, really tough for a team. But I think um, the whole sprint uh, squad pulled itself together really, really well. And um, we're moving forward with, with fast steps. We've tried different combinations here for the team sprint. 
um, we have uh, athletes challenging each other and moving forward and uh, we see here um, young talent uh, Sean Fulton taking out uh, all of the women gold medals um, which is which is really really impressive to see so um, we're moving really really well forward and um, I'm excited to see what the future holds. Yes, Sam, Sam Webster commented when I spoke to him after uh, his victory in the individual sprint how excited he was to see so many young riders coming through. Uh, Bradley Knife in particular, I think he, he's taken a little bit of a break. He's come back into it. The times he's producing, that's really exciting, Rene. Uh, definitely, and it's, it's really, really nice to see that we also slowly again building a little bit of a base in, the, in sprinting um, and having athletes who, who are specializing in the discipline and moving forward and seeing their future in in that discipline, that's really, really exciting. Would you like to see, you know, in our age group here, under 15s, under 17s, riding more sprint competition, less uh, longer events? Uh, in, in my opinion, uh, the sprint on the track is, is a awesome competition to uh, learn skills on the bike, to learn movement within the peloton, to learn how to judge your own speed and all of that. So it's it's something what should be part of uh, the education of every young cyclist, I think. It's been a, a, a wonderful championship. The team's travelling nicely. Uh, do you have any indication when you'll depart for the Olympic Games? Has, has anything come through from the Olympic Committee, the IOC, to what Tokyo is going to look like? Um, we, as we all heard, there is uh, the famous playbook coming out, how the, how the games will be run, and there are obviously um, some, some management questions still there. So the NZOC is, is working hard with uh, the IOC together at the moment to solve all these little problems and to solve um, when do we get into the Olympic Village, when do we move out, when do we um, get competition time, training time, and all that stuff. Um, so at the moment we are we are going on on our normal schedule. We are, as we said, we are here in the happy place that we can prepare undisrupted, and um, we make use of all the facilities we have. So we're just going full gas uh, to the games, and then if we're closer to there, we will get told the date, and then we go and uh, compete there. So pre pre games leading up to the games, how many more big competitions will you create? A domestic competition again, or you'll be hoping for maybe an international hit out? Um, no, we're not, we're not planning on any, any international because it's just too unpredictable in the world at the moment. So we, we definitely will uh, plan different measure moments, uh, different test moments throughout the next uh, half year leading into the Games. Um, but obviously this, this year is our last real competition moment. Everything else will be um, uh, testing moments uh, between or behind closed doors. Well, uh, all the best for the Olympic Games. Thanks very much for giving us your insight into these championships and uh, what you've seen and some advice to some young and up and cup and riders. Just ride sprints. It helps you in everything cycling. Rene Wolf, thank you very much. Thank you. So we'll now head down to Julian in the centre of the track for the medal presentations in a few moments' time. And uh, great to have Rene Wolf speaking to us on Sky Sport next. He's a, a wonderful coach. Wonderful man, always got time to speak to younger riders, to speak to the media, to give his view. What I like about Rene as well is he, he doesn't hide anything. When he tells you something, it's straight up and down. And uh, he's excited with what he's seen at these championships and happy with how the team is, is tracking towards the Tokyo Olympic Games. So coming up, uh, if you're sitting at home on, watching us on Sky Sport Next, thanks very much for joining us. The people in the stadium are just relaxing, having a small break while we get set for the medal presentations. Uh, Sean Fulton, three gold medals at these championships, winning the all elite sprint events as well as a non-championship one lap time trial on the opening day. So she's had an outstanding championships, certainly the rider of the championships so far. Coming up in the program, of course, we have the under-19 women's scratch race and the men's under-19 points race. They're still to come. Dale Woodford, Julian Ineson with you on Sky Sport next.
The riders are all settling in in the infield. You can see them in the wide shot there, lining up for their medal presentations. It's on the rise. have had huge programs. Nick Kugazu, Aaron Gate. I think they've just about ridden everything. Kugazu's ridden the sprints as well. Had a great championships. He's the non-travelling reserve, or sorry, the travelling reserve for the Olympic men's team's pursuit team. A great young talent, Sean Fulton. I know I've mentioned it a couple of times, and sorry for repeating myself, but uh, Graham Hunt, the high performance development manager at Cycling New Zealand, has said she deserves every medal she gets at these championships because her work ethic has certainly been second to none through what's been a very tough time. Uh, with the, the racing and competition being disrupted and winning the sprint title. So we're all set. We're getting ready for the presentations. It's over to Julian Ineson in the centre of the track. Thanks, Dow. We'll just about get all our riders uh, all sorted and ready to go. Quite a few medal ceremonies uh, to move forward through. And I see uh, with the confirmed results of the elimination, Mark Stewart's getting uh, disqualified, so a change in results around for that. We'll get now prepared and ready to go here. Ladies and gentlemen, the awards ceremony for the 2021 Elite Under-19 National Track Championships Elite Men's 4,000 metre Individual Pursuit Championship will now take place. The medals will be presented to Mr Alan Dunn, Life Member of Cycling Southlands. In third place, and winner of the bronze medal, representing the East Coast North Island, Regan Goff. In second place, and winner of the silver medal, representing Southland, Mark Stewart. In first place, the winner of the gold medal in the 2021 Elite Men's 4,000 metre Individual Pursuit National Champion, representing Auckland, Aaron Gates. And Aaron to receive the Ron Cheatley Family Trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for the place getters in the 2021 Vantage Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony for the 2021 Vantage Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships, Under-19 Men's 3,000 metre Individual Pursuit Championship will now take place. Once again, the medals will be presented by Mr. Alan Dunn, Life Member of Cycling Southlands. In third place, and winner of the bronze medal, representing Mid-South Canary, Jonathan Fish. In second place, and winner of the silver medal, representing Canterbury, Ryan McLeod. In first place, the winner of the gold medal and the 2021 Under-19 Men's Individual Pursuit National Champion, representing Waikato Bay of Plenty, Jack Carswell. And the winner to receive the DA Camperini Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for the place getters in the 2021 Vantage Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony for the 2021 Vantage Elite Under-19 Track National Championships Elite Women's Karen will now take place.
in third place and winner of the bronze medal representing Waikato Bay of Plenty, Elise Andrews. In second place and winner of the silver medal representing Canterbury, Samantha Donnelly. In first place, the winner of the gold medal and the 2021 Elite Women's Kieran National Champion, representing Tasman, Sean Fulton. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for the place getters in the 2021 Vantage Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, the awards ceremony for the 2021 Vantage Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships Elite Men's Kieran will now take place. In third place and winner of the bronze medal, representing Waikato Bay of Plenty, Jackson Ogle. In second place and winner of the silver medal, representing Tasman, Callum Saunders. In first place, the winner of the gold medal and the 2021 Elite Men's Kieran National Champion, representing Auckland, Sam Dakin. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for the place getters in the 2021 Vantage Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, the awards ceremony for the 2021 Vantage Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships Elite Men's Elimination will now take place. In third place and winner of the bronze medal, representing the East Coast North Island, Regan Goff. In second place and winner of the silver medal, Representing Auckland, Aaron Gate. In first place, the winner of the gold medal and the 2021 Elite Men's Elimination National Champion. Representing Southland, Corbin Strong. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for the place getters in the 2021 Vantage Elite and Under-19 Trek National Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, the awards ceremony for the 2021 Vantage Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships Under-19 Women's Sprint will now take place. In third place and winner of the bronze medal, representing Waikato Bay of Plenty, Lily Kaywoods. In second place and winner of the silver medal, Representing Canterbury, Sophie DeVries, Waikato Bay of Plenty. In first place, the winner of the gold medal and the 2021 Under-19 Women's Sprint National Champion. Representing Canterbury, Amelia Sykes.
Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for the place getters in the 2021 Vantage Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, the awards ceremony for the 2021 Vantage Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships. Under-19 Men's Sprint will now take place. In third place, and winner of the bronze medal, representing Waikato Bay of Plenty, Liam Kevner. In second place, and winner of the silver medal, representing Waikato Bay of Plenty, Jared Mann. In first place, the winner of the gold medal and the 2021 Under-19 Men's Sprint National Champion, representing Tasman, Kyo Lartz. And the champion to receive the Lua Rose Bowl Trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for the place getters in the 2021 Vantage Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to take the opportunity to do a very special presentation here for the 2020 Male Track Cyclist of the Year to be presented by Erin Crinlington, Vice President of Site New Zealand Track and Road. Riders, if you could please just move back, we're doing a presentation. Ladies, if we just move right back for the presentations, please. Apologies, Corbin. So we said Erin Crinlington, Vice President of Site New Zealand Track and Roads, and the 2020 Male Track Cyclist of the Year, Awarded to Southland's Corbin Strong. <laughs> Corbin's fine win and gold medal in the real championships points race was achieved in a real class performance, something signaled in the past performances. Folks, would you put your hands together for the 2020 Male Track Cyclist of the Year, Corbin Strong. So we've very kindly got a bit of time here with Amelia, and I've got a very busy program, so we won't hold you up too long. Amelia Sykes, of course, the winner tonight of the sprint, but of course, another gold medal for you at these championships. How good is that? Oh, I'm so stoked. It's really awesome. Yeah. So mixing it up between endurance and sprint, is that something you're quite used to doing? Yeah, I quite, I quite like both, and I kind of just give a crack in both and everything, really. I just do as best as I can and see what happens, but yeah, I really enjoy it. Well, it's certainly happening for you here over the last couple of days. Congratulations. We'll let you get onto the track for your next lot of racing very shortly. Folks, would you put your hands together for Amelia Sykes. So uh, joining me now, we've got the pursuit champion here for the under-19 uh, men's, of course, Jack Carswell. Congratulations, Jack. A fine effort out there in the pursuit tonight. Yeah, thank you. It was a really good race. I'm super happy with my time. Um, it was a big PB for me. Yeah, really happy with how it went. So a personal best, of course, that must uh, boost the confidence going further on into the competition. Yeah, I only have the points race tonight left, so see what I can do there. And there's some tough competition in this particular age group again this year. Yeah, definitely. All the boys are super strong. We have a really good group of boys racing. Well, congratulations on your efforts. We look forward to seeing you later on tonight. Folks, would you put your hands together for Jack Carswell?
So Aaron Gates are here with us. Of course, we've seen him in fine fashion here today with the individual pursuit and, of course, the eliminations, etc. as well. But Aaron, congratulations. Another fine effort in the individual pursuit. Yeah, thanks, mate. It was uh, good to get that record again off, off myself and uh, show that <laughs> the form's still tracking in the right direction towards the Olympics. It's been a massive last six months for you with the Tour of Southlands and, of course, a lot of the road races and as well as these uh, national titles. And that there, you must be extremely pleased the way things overall are tracking for you personally. Yeah, for sure. And a big big uh, bonus for us too was that time we did in the Team Pursuit on Tuesday, which was uh, great to get, get that time down on the boards. And especially back in uh, the track in Invercargill where my indoor track racing all started back in 2008, I think, was the first time I raced down here as a junior. So cool to be back here racing in the, in the thick of it. Well, it's always great to have you in the Deep South, folks. Would you put your hands together for Aaron Gate, your winner of the individual pursuits. Joining us now is Sean Fulton, of course, the uh, winner of the elite women's uh, Kieran. Well, Sean, you continue to go from strength to strength. You've got to be absolutely stoked with that result. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was just really nice to get out there and get another one under the belt. And I knew it was going to be a hard race and had to run through some serious scenarios in my head to see how I was going to win it. But, yeah, it paid off. And, yeah. So we've talked a little bit about that in the commentary coming in with a bit of a plan. So you as a rider going through all the various options that could come out to play? Yeah, definitely. There was a lot running through my head, even when we were on the track behind the bike. I was like, be prepared, be prepared for anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, congratulations on your efforts. We look forward to seeing you on the rest of the uh, racing. Folks, would you put your hands together for Sean Fulton, winner of the Elite Women's Karen. Now joining us is uh, Sam Dakin, of course, uh, the winner of the Elite Men's uh, Karen. Well, Sam, and that there was some tough battlers going out there tonight. So it was always going to be a tight one. Yeah, it was always going to be a stack field, I think, in the final. And obviously, like Sambo talked to last night, the depth we're starting to see in, in New Zealand Karen. But it was a race I was, I was pretty G'd up for, and I was really happy to come away with the one. So what is the approach for Sam Dakin coming into an event like that in terms of a process? Um, just staying calm and following instinct really is what it came down to. I had a slight plan of what I was going to do, but it was a matter of reading the race and, and following that, and um, luckily today it paid off. Well, congratulations on a fine effort indeed, folks. He is your New Zealand Kieran Race Champion, Sam Dakin of Auckland. Okay, joining me now is the local man, Corbin Strong, of course, for the Elite Men's Elimination we just saw on the track just earlier. Well, congratulations, Corbin. Bit of pressure coming into the event, of course, with the local crowds. Yeah, it's awesome to be racing at home in front of, uh, yeah, the Southland support. Lots of familiar faces that have helped me uh, throughout my time in the sport, so it's cool to be back, in, back at home racing in front of them. Of course, you and I have talked a little bit over the last uh, six months. It's been a challenging year to actually get out and do some competition, so I guess the entire squad must be really G'd up to be able to do this. Yeah, it's awesome. Like the quality of racing we have in New Zealand at the moment is is like World Cup quality. The fields we're racing against is awesome, like and that's testament to New Zealand cycling. I mean, coming here this week I knew even top tens were gonna be that hard. Uh, just the depth we've got in New Zealand cycling at the moment. It's just awesome and yeah, super grateful to be here racing. And just finally, of course, tomorrow's gonna be a special day for you. Get to put the world colours on in front of the New Zealand public. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be a special moment and one I'm remember for a while so yeah I pray for good legs and hopefully it's a nice race for myself. Well congratulations on your efforts here tonight folks would you put your hands together for Corbin Strong the winner of the Elite Men's Elimination. So joining us now is Kai Olaat, of course the winner of the under-19 men's uh, sprint. Well congratulations on that, great to see those Tasman colours to the fore. Yeah, absolutely awesome to be running the parachute again. You know, to see Sean and Callum both here giving it a good go, it's awesome to have a team. 
you know, it's been a while since Team Tasman pulled it together, so it's just awesome to be back. And a bit of banter out there on the trek, I notice, on the uh, start line. Oh, yeah, always got to keep it fun. It's the reason I ride my bike, and, you know, blowing kisses on the line doesn't really get much more intimidating than that, so. And after last night, I know you were trying all sorts of things in the Kieran. It didn't quite come off, so to come back and do this tonight here must be quite gratifying. Yeah, the Kieran was a bit of a shambles, so to come back and take it out in six clean rides is absolutely awesome. Well, congratulations on your win, folks. Would you put your hands together for Kyle Lard, the winner of the Under-19 Sprint Championship? So th thanks very much, Julian, and uh, great to hear from the riders. The Under-19 Women's Scratch Race Field, Amy Blackmore, Georgia Cluth, Charlotte Spurway, Caitlin Murray, Michaela Grant, Kira Kelly, Jessica Spencer, Riley Aykroyd, Jane Perry, Sophie DeVeers. Starting down on the blue band, B. Townsian, Amelia Sykes, Jenna Borthwick, Madison Lowry, Samantha Walker, Jasmine McLeod, Phil Harris-Blaine, Holly Bliss, Prudence Flower, Keisha Anderson. So pretty straightforward race, seven and a half kilometres, that's 30 laps of the track. The starter is happy, he's given them the all clear, good to go. As we just watch B. Townsend move up the track. Very good rider from Ibsen Girls Grammar School. And, uh, been a big part of their school cycling program. Jenna Borthwick, you'll see her in her familiar blue shoes. There she goes. Going through on the front, number 76. She's been riding exceptionally well again at these championships. And tracking her, Madison Lowry takes over. So the scratch race, there's always a, a few, few tactics. Lots of things to think about. As we see Amy Blackmore leading through the colours of Auckland. B. Townsend follows her. Got Georgia Cluth in there also representing the Auckland Centre. So the sprinters, they like to keep it steady. They don't want to, the race to be full gas, full on. So when we see it bunched up, spread across the track, we know the pace is at tempo. Then with the other riders that like to make it hard, stretch it out, try and deaden the legs of the sprinters. So 30 laps is the distance. One sprint, that's the one at the end. That's all that matters. The Townsend very prominent in the early stages of the race. Keisha Anderson moving through. Just moves up inside up to the motor pace line, the blue line in the middle of the track. Anderson having a look. Still quite tightly bunched. No one's gone. Well, I'm just going to tear their legs off. I'm just going to save some energy. Samantha Walker looks under her shoulder as well. I'm just uh, going to cruise up the track. Canterbury Riders, fairly prominent. Got plenty of them in the field. Charlotte Spurway, Jenna Borthwick, Caitlin Murray, Madison Lowry, Michaela Grant, Samantha Walker, all representing the Canterbury Centre. It's an individual race, but the teammates very really will hunt each other down. They're not allowed to impede other riders. As we see Charlotte Spurway just starting to stretch the legs out. And Charlotte Spurway always a very good, aggressive rider. National Road Race champion. Been some great racing. Fantastic to have Renee Wolf join us earlier if you missed it and you've just joined us on Sky Sport Next well you can go back and watch it get his insight into the track nationals and his thoughts we'll be bringing some other guests and uh, hopefully tomorrow through the team sprint program some of the coaches and uh, riders might be a little bit freer Charlotte Spurway, Jenna Borthwick so the group's still pretty compact at the moment but the Canterbury riders, Jenna Borthwick, deciding, well, let's stretch the legs. And we're in the early stages of the, of the bike race. They'll come around to get 19 laps to go. So head down the back straight. Of course, you have to respond. And now the pace is starting to string out. So around the banking. He sits up the track, but started uh, a bit of a reaction. We'll see if anyone counterattacks. 
Southland rider, Jessica Spencer, goes through. Charlotte Spurway moves high on the track. They all half the field follow her up the track. They know she's one of the riders to keep an eye on. There's a, a starter just pointing to them. So the group just eases up and uh, spreads out across the track. When you see them five wide, you know, well, the pace isn't full gas. In fact, uh, it's a little bit of let's look and wait and see who wants to make the next move. This is uh, the seven and a half kilometre under 19 woman scratch race at the Advantage Windows and Doors Elite and under 19 track national championships coming to you from the SIT Zero Fees at Velodrome here in Invercargill. Wonderful facility. We've heard from the riders how much they enjoy racing here. Aaron Gates saying his first time he raced here was 2008. So we saw Michaela Grant move up midfield. And uh, the riders just, as we see Holly Bliss in the familiar pink helmet, move to the centre. But the group still fairly sedate pace, and that'll really play into the hands of the sprinters. They'll get 15 to go when they come past. The, the finisher line, so halfway through the race, uh, Grupo Compacto. Sophie De Vez, so we'll take the medal in the sprint competition earlier in the evening. Charlotte Spurway has a look over her shoulder, she moves up the track, just keep an eye on things, see who wants to make a move. Caitlin Murray. Charlotte Spurway going around the top of the track. They see her on the inside. They uh, heard the, the yells come that Spurway was going to start to pick things up. So Charlotte Spurway loves to race aggressively. I love the way she races. Absolutely doesn't mind taking it to the other riders and making it as hard as she can. Jenna Borthwick onto the wheel of Charlotte Spurway. And these two starting to put some pressure. A little split in the group. Getting into the... They'll come around 12 laps. It regroups. Prudence Fowler. At the front, the black helmet, the Waikato colours, moves into the centre of the track, covering the moves from Canterbury, just trying to keep it all together. Kayla Grant decides, well, just roll through. It's easier sometimes down on the pole line, the little black line at the bottom of the track. It's the shortest way around. You can spend all day riding around high on the track, but uh, you might be using, you're covering a fair bit more distance. It's often a little bit harder on the banking. You've got to push a little bit harder on the pedals. So the pace still playing into the hands of the sprinters. Keisha Anderson, she won't mind this. She's got a great sprint finish on her. And she sits midfield on the inside. Gina Borthwick goes, well, I don't want to ride around at this pace. I know, well, we saw her in the Karen, how she went three wide, four wide, and had the strength to uh, ride everyone off. So she'll take a lot of confidence into this uh, final. A lot of riders in here with some great form. Nobody's been prepared to go full gas. At the moment, we see Prudence Fowler. Keisha Anderson follows Prudence Fowler. B. Townsend just floating at the back, high on the track in front of Holly Bliss in the pink helmet. So they got a little bit of a plan. We can see B. Townsend starting to move around the outside. Maybe just trying to position herself a little bit more near the front, push herself down lower on the track. Caitlin Murray. Drops down, just sneaks away by a couple of bike lengths, but not going full gas, just wants to see if anyone's going to let her go. Gets a bit of encouragement from the crowd as she goes down that home straight. They swing up, no one wants to chase. Kish Anderson just sits on the front of the group and lets the Canterbury rider get about 15 metres. Always a little bit dangerous when you let someone float off the front because they're doing it without too much uh, loss of energy. So the Canterbury rider... Caitlin Murray, great to see her coming back from injury and uh, getting into the race well straight away. There's a response. Absolutely flying around the outside. Michaela Grant. Michaela Grant goes, well, it's time to make the move. We've got six laps to go, so I'm going to go six out. Just see if uh, anyone wants to go after me. So Michaela Grant's gone, well, this is my effort for the bike race. Southland decide, well, we've got to get after Michaela Grant. So if they swing up and the field swings up, Michaela Grant's just got to keep it steady, concentrate on the job and hand out in front. Five to go. Holly Bliss just sitting there, just trying to get onto the back of this group. Grant, still the big chase from Southland. They want to shut it down. 
The Southland Riders, Riley Ackroyd, Blaine Pearl Harris, Jessica Spencer. And they bring it back. So that was a good effort. Four to go, 1,000 metres, four left. Four laps left in this seven and a half kilometre scratch race. 30 laps of racing and it's going to come down to a bunch sprint right at the moment. Everybody's sitting there nice and content. Michaela Grant on the front. So she's burnt a fair few, few matches. And there's a move going around the outside. That could be Jessica Spencer heading around the outside. Jessica Spencer goes well. I'll just hit them now. It looked like a little bit of a lull. Jenna Borthwick onto the back wheel though. So Spencer, what's she going to do? She's in the position. She's almost got to lead it out with 500 metres to go. Borthwick sitting there nicely. That'll be Riley Ackroyd tucked in uh, behind Jenna Borthwick. There's Jenna Borthwick getting out of the saddle. Going, there's a few riders starting to rock and roll and swing on the handlebars. Jenna Borthwick's going to take them into the bell lap. She's going for a long sprint. Jenna Borthwick, oh, the home crowd, though. They're getting behind the Southland rider. Ackroyd, can she get up and get over it? I don't think so, Jenna Borthwick. But Riley Ackroyd's onto the back wheel now. She swings out, pulls on the handlebars, rolls the head. But Jenna Borthwick's too strong and takes out the scratch race. Great ride from Riley Ackroyd for the silver medal. Well, Jenna Borthwick doesn't mind committing. She committed from two and a half to go, let it out. Fantastic ride by the Canterbury rider, Jenna Borthwick. The pure strength of the Canterbury rider does it again. She doesn't mind going from a long way out as we've seen time and time again down here on the velodrome in Invercargill. Borthwick just proving too strong to hold out to Ackroyd of Southland with a fine effort for the silver medal. Confirmation very shortly of the bronze and the rest of the minor placings here. But no doubt about the winner, folks. Here she comes down the straight again, still catching her breath, and who can blame her? Jenna Borthwick taking out the title here for the under-19 women's scratch race. Well, as they make their way around the track, wind down, Jenna Borthwick adds another title to the long list. Her coach, Terry Jide, will be absolutely delighted. She's had a great championship, has been performing exceptionally well. So coming up is the final race on the program. It's uh, the elite under-19 men's junior points race final, 20 kilometres. 80 laps, 8 sprints, a sprint every 10 laps. We'll run through the field. Starting on the railing, we'll have Edward Pawson of Auckland, Matt McLoon as teammate, Canterbury will have on the fence, Darcy Saunders, McAlvin Hennigan, Mid-South Canterbury, Jackson White, Southland, Morgan Borry, Connor Shearing, Waikato Bar Plenty, Ewan Cousins, Jack Gillingham, Matthew Davis, West Coast, North Island, Dylan Cumming. Starting down on the blue band on the inside of the track, Joel Douglas, Redmond Connolly, John T. Harris, Ryan McLeod, Jonathan Fish, Reuben Hislop, Jack Carswell, Lewis Johnson, Oliver Watson Palmer, and Zach Patterson. This, ladies and gentlemen, will be a race to uh, buckle yourselves in for. There will be plenty of attacks, plenty of aggression. Remember the points race? There are 10 sprints. The sprint points are awarded 5, 3, 2, 1. There are double points on the last lap. If you lap the field, you get 20 points. If you lose a lap, you lose 20. So uh, there's plenty of time with 80 laps for riders to take laps, lose laps, gain points. Under 19 men's full field. And uh, they make their way, Julian, up onto the Coach Azur, those starting on the big wide blue band and the other riders heading up onto the railing. They've got to start in the order, as they were called. So Pawson, Matt McClure, Darcy Saunders will line up towards the front of the railing. Joel Douglas will be in the colours of Auckland down on the inside, just uh, on that racing line. So a full capacity field, and it's a well-stacked one, looking at the sort of performers that we've got in there. Some names that you've already heard over the last couple of days. No doubt about to over the next... Uh, 60-odd, 80, sorry, laps of this uh, race over the 20K. We've seen the likes of Jackson White already in performing here tonight and the likes of the sprints. We've got Ryan McLeod, Jonathan Fish. As we were just talking before, doing the interview with uh, Jack Carswell, there'll be some of the names that these riders will be very wary of to be in the mix uh, here. But as we've seen time and time again with the points race, it's one like all races, but particularly in this one here where you've got to be very attentive throughout. 
which is a long way to be able to do so, just to focus on what's going on, and again, having to make some very quick decisions because, as we can uh, see in the points race is often happening, the splits can happen, breaks can go, and you've got to make those decisions. Is that a rider I need to go with? Is that one I need to sit back? Will somebody else shut down the gap? And more often than not, we see riders miss out on those opportunities if they allow just to, to sit back and hope that someone else will shut down the gap. Eventually, at some stage, you have to be the one to commit to do that. So these riders will be well aware of the uh, serious calibre of rider that are in here and know that that sort of thing could happen, breaks at any time. So just uh, while this race gets underway, of course, our thoughts, prayers uh, with Brian Fowler, eight times winner of the Tour of Southland, who uh, has had a heart attack and is currently in hospital. So we wish Brian all the very, very best for his recovery. One of the real greats of New Zealand cycling. And, uh, we wish Brian all the best and uh, thoughts and prayers with his family, his boys. So the race, the gun, the starter is very happy and that gets things underway. Lewis Johnson, he decides, well, I'll just open it up a little bit on the front. The young man who is a protege of St. Peter's College there in Cambridge. Ronan Shearing, he's been in some good form in these championships. The tall figure, the young Southland rider, moves up and uh, he'll just see how far back he goes. They often look for a little gap in the field, don't want to always go to the back because they decide to light it up. Always interesting to look at the leg speed of the riders, the cadence they're pedalling at. It gives you an idea of who's got the big cog on. Some of them choose to ride a, a lower gear. Some of them uh, will put a big gear on and you know want the race to be kept at a nice high pace. If you're a little bit under geared, you can uh, rev yourself right out of the race. You'll red line it. But uh, they will have their plans. The riders that have been mentioned by Julian to keep an eye on. Of course, Jack Carswell loves this sort of race. I had my money on him the other night in the scratch race, but uh, he had the looked like he had the spring fully wound up, but didn't didn't let the lock off. So he was saving a little bit, obviously, for that great ride he put in in the individual pursuit. He's got nothing to lose as we see the Mid South Canterbury rider Jonathan Fish go through. He's got his teammate in there, Jackson White, who just sits a little bit further back midfield. Lewis Johnson pulls up, oh, there he goes, now he's uh, dropped down behind Jack Gillingham. Jack Gillingham goes to Tauranga Boys High School, so nice to see him down here in the Deep South racing these national championships. Ryan McLeod, who's up the track, he uh, had a great ride earlier in the individual pursuit. Ruben Heslip, he swings up the track and uh, we look at Mikkel van Hennigan, the big tall figure, the young Canterbury rider, always aggressive as well. So as we noted so earlier on, of course the sprints, if you haven't seen one of these points races before, evenly spread across the entire competition. So the riders, as well as deciding on where they need to be positioned and doing the countdown on the uh, clock there as they come on through on the lap boards, deciding where they need to be positioned, coming in a good two to three laps out. They don't want to come from flying from right from the rear of the group because you won't really get away with that too often, particularly in a capacity field such as this. And we do have maximum fields on that for various races, depending on the age groups and the size of the track. As the pace is slowly being poured on a little bit here, just lifting them slightly, stretching them out as they prepare for the first of the sprints. No one too interested, though, for going for the early one. But you can see a few of the, few of the Waikato boys now starting to make themselves available towards the front. And it's the familiar figure of a couple of guys we've seen in action over the last couple of days. As they start to wind things on up here, here. Like some Matt Davis and Gillingham and Co. are all starting to get into the mix. Now we've also got Auckland into the mix there with Joel Douglas we saw earlier tonight. He's on the shoulder at the moment, just trying to roll through and get the points. They won't necessarily burn all the matches doing it. A tight one for the top uh, five across the line. Of course, 5-3, two and one of the points. Now we'll be interested to see what sort of counter-attack would go on because that is typical after a sprint. And it's Morgan Barrier Southland that just decided to keep a bit of pressure on. But uh, two or three of these other riders that decide, no, thank you, we'll just head on up. We'll have a look and see what's going on and to ensure that we stay near the front as Ryan McLeod rolls on through for the Canterbury contingent, again, with a big group of riders contesting this points race. Well, Zach Patterson opening his account did it very comfortably as well, taking the five points. So we'll wait for it to come up uh, on the screen. There we go, Zach Patterson, Joel Douglas, Morgan Borry, 5, 3, 2 and 1. So Zach Patterson is going to continue his good form at these championships. Mikel Van Hennigan swings up the track. Jackson White does the same. 
Jack Gillingham. And we got the uh, Ronan Sharon. Ronan, I think, will go well in this points race if he's got the endurance. He's been there or thereabouts in the sprints. Matthew Davis did get the final point. So he's uh, got a point. That's what you need to do in the points race is score them when you can. Try and get the points without using too much energy. But it's always no to open your account. Zach Patterson, always prominent at the front. Of course, uh, riding with the Fusio team, Lewis Johnson. He's been in the action in the first uh, 12 or 15 laps of this race. Eight sprints throughout. If you just joined us on Sky Sport Next, Dale Woodford and Julian Ineson in the commentary. Great to uh, be calling this race. It's the final race on tonight's program, the under-19 men's points race. Always uh, one of the premier titles. Who's going to be the first to launch a big attack? They've got 64 laps left on, on the lap board to think about it. It's a big crowd here in supporting the local riders. Ryan McLeod, always prominent, always wants to try and get things going. And the Waikato riders, so he'll swing up. Zach Patterson takes over. Jonathan Fish will go through. So Jonathan Fish, we look a little bit further down the field. They're still fairly relaxed at the moment. Riders quite comfortable just drifting to the back of the field. So they're not seeing anyone going to light up a big attack. Joel Douglas, who rode a fantastic race uh, to take out the scratch race. Just uh, covering things at the moment, just sitting comfortable in the field. Oliver Watson Palmer. Tracking, tracking him, just keeping an eye on him. A little bit of a move on the inside of the track. Uh, everyone responds straight away. Ronan Sharon just drops down onto the wheel. That'll be Jack Gillingham. Jack Gillingham just uh, thinking, well, we'll pick it up. We're going to come in to get the bell for the second sprint. So Jack Gillingham, he swings out the track as well. He's going to lead it out. But I'll leave it. I'll leave it to Ronan Sharon. Zach Patterson, look where he is. And look at the move coming around the outside from Jackson White, Mid-South Canterbury. Jackson White, well, he's put on the, he flicked the turbo switch, got a couple of bite links. He goes, well, I'll open my account, take the five points. Zach Patterson's coming hard on the outside to try and get the three. And we'll leave it to the judges. It looks like Patterson from where I was sitting and look at them going across, takes the three points. But a very good win for Jackson White, taking out the five points. So we'll uh, get an update on the leaderboard from the judges, but Jackson White decides, uh, well, I've got it. Now Edward Pawson goes on the attack straight after. The young Auckland rider always loves to uh, sit out. If he hasn't scored points, but he's pulled in pretty quickly, just confirming those results. Jackson White, Zach Patterson, Ronan Sharon, Oliver Watson, Palmer. So we'll get an update on the overall after two sprints of eight in this under-19 men's points race final at the Vantage Windows and Doors National Track Championships. Yeah, I don't think Jackson could believe his luck there with the uh, riders hesitating a little bit coming into it. They weren't going as hard as they had been earlier on here. And so he took the full advantage of it. So Patterson on eight points in total now. White on five. Joel Douglas sitting in third on three points. Morgan Borry on two. Shearing on two. Davis on one and Watson Palmer on one. Now Watson Palmer, been an interesting man to watch there as he's been coming up through the ranks. He's the sort of guy that would have a bit of a nudge off the front. He won't want to leave it purely to the sprints, I wouldn't imagine. The way in which he likes to pursue and decide to get himself off and clear and try and escape and try and take that lap out. Because remember folks, you take a lap out on the field, you pick up another 20 points and riders can also finish in the negatives. So they'll be very aware of that. But at the moment, it's not too hot a pace here. These riders just seem to be a little bit hesitant down, just looking a lot around at each other a fair bit and waiting for each of the sprints. Yeah, well, Ribbon Connolly swings out the track. Well, it's always difficult when you've got the likes of Zach Patterson, who's one of the strongest in the field, but he's also sprinting very, very well. And there he goes, just rolling through. Just keeps the gear going, doesn't mind doing his bit of work. The field follows him up. Jack Castle hasn't scored anything yet, so Jack just sitting patiently. I'm sure he will light the... A couple of matches and hit them pretty hard at some stage in this points race and try and take a lap. He'll just let the other riders, I think, at the moment settle down. Ryan McLeod, he's always a very aggressive. Saw him take the, the silver medal in the individual pursuit competition and uh, he just gets that engine going. Doesn't always have the big kick to take the points, but he loves to get in a bit of a break and score from being off the front. And that's what he's done going with him. Jack Gillingham from uh, the Waikato Bay of Plenty. Well, if you go with Ryan McLeod, you've got to be prepared to put your head down and do a big turn. And he swings up the track, so uh, it's a little bit neutralised. So the group sitting around, they've got 52 on the board. They'll get the bell next time through for another sprint. Lewis Johnson just moves up. Michael Van Hennigan goes, well, I'm going to stretch the long legs. It's time to get some points on the board. His teammate reacts straight away, has a look over his shoulder. Don't worry about who's there. It's Zach Patterson. He won't miss a beat all night. I know his dad and his family will be tuned in watching. So uh, Michael Van Hennigan, Mikael Van Hennigan with a, a big lead. He's going to take this. Now the big man can go, so he's liable to keep going after this. He probably won't sit up and wait. 
He'll say, well, it's uh, catch me if you can. Keep up or catch up. And they're going to have to catch up as he goes down the back straight. Who's going to keep it going? Who's going to chase? Who's left uh, used all the energy in that sprint? Now he swings up the track. That's because someone's coming after him. It's why Caterider could be the figure of Jack Carswell, but he's just a little bit blurry on our shot and our view. We look out over the track. Yeah, Jack Carswell. It is indeed Jack Carswell going with Miguel Van Hennigan. Van Hennigan, Patterson, Watson, Palmer. Jack Carswell picked up the point. Now two riders, two of the strongest in the field. They'll work together. Jack Carswell will just give it everything all day. So Jack Carswell, well, we said he would sit back and he would wait to hit them. He waited for three sprints and he's hit them hard. They'll come around, they'll get 46 on the lap board. 46 to go in the points race. And the field has exploded. Carswell has revealed his plan here. He waited patiently there, waited for that gap to go as the rest hesitated to try and jump across to Van Hennigan, who's sucking in the big ones to try and stay with the individual pursuit champion. As a few more riders now start to make themselves available, and we're seeing groups left, right and centre all over the track here. This will keep the commissaires on their toes here as they continue to watch exactly where riders are positioned, because again, you don't want to be lapped, you'll lose those points, so they'll be keeping a very close eye on that as that bit of calmness comes to the front of the race. Ryan McLeod, he's got one of those figures there, the way he rides the bike, he's quite deceiving. The power that that man produces doesn't rock on the bike, unlike a few others that give it away when they're putting full pressure onto the pedals. But McLeod has decided to open a bit of a gap here. Who's done the recovery? Who's got the recovery ability to be able to bounce back time and time again? It looks like just a handful that are potentially going to be able to get themselves across to McLeod but they're still pulling on up here and giving it away to him. He'll be more than happy, Dale, to stay out there all day long. Yeah, all right, McLeod, a little bit of frustration. Joel Douglas, he put in a big effort to get across to Mikel Van Hennigan, and Jack Carswell got across, and Van Hennigan, well, he was sucking in some big ones after taking the sprint and keeping it going. So Ryan McLeod just has timed it perfectly. He's out front, he's got the big gear, he's on top of it. That'll be his plan. Zach Patterson leads the group down the back straight. Ryan McLeod with the uh, white glasses on. On top, just has a look over his shoulder. He'll be getting some instructions from his coach. Once he gets up to half a lap, now the bunch has spread right across the track, five wide, so you know the pace has gone right out of that. So McLeod just uh, doing what he does best out in front. He goes into time trial mode as we see a, a reaction coming now. Well, they've left it fairly late to chase him. He's going to get the five points. He'll come down. He's getting the bell. He's got the bell. Ryan McLeod out front. He's opened up a fairly decent-sized gap on them as well, almost uh, half the length of the track. And he knows they'll be coming after him, but they'll sprint and they'll probably sit up. So Ryan McLeod will just concentrate, keep things going. He laps Jack Gillingham. And we yeah. go out to the line pretty tight for the minor points. We'll wait till it comes up onto our screens. We're looking at McLeod out front. There he goes, just time trialing away. Now there's a split, a split on the ground. Looks like out there's two from Auckland, so I'm sure Joel Douglas will be one of those. It'll be Edward Pawson, Luke Blackwood, or Matt McLoone, all three of them. Well, it could be the three of the four. Who's got a cross out? This is a good move by Auckland. They've decided it's time to go. There's an update on the leaderboard. Patterson on 11, Van Hennigan 5, along with White and McLeod. Joel Douglas, Jack Carswell on 4, Oliver Watson Palmer on 3. That's after 38 laps of 80 in the points race. Remember, there's double points on the last. Ryan McLeod, he has a little bit of a sit-up. We've got four riders going across. Three of those are from Auckland. So that's going to put a lot of pressure on the rest of the field now. That's a great move. Joel Douglas, he's taking us some teammates for company. Jack Carswell. So Jack Carswell, he's with them. There's uh, Joel Douglas. We'll call him the real deal. That's what Hone said, he's the real deal. Joel Douglas, Edward Pawson sitting in there in third wheel, joining them uh, from Auckland, Redmond Connolly as well. This is a great move, Julian Ineson. That's a big move by the Auckland contingent here to get themselves off the front. They would have discussed this earlier in the competition of how they're going to approach this to try and get themselves off the front as the race gets deep into the, the sharp end of this race for these guys. 5-3, 2-1, still up for grabs for each of these points. Going to make a lot of difference at the moment. Some of these riders getting off the front here and picking up some more of those to eliminate some of the riders that are further back in the field. But McLeod, he's just constant, isn't he? Just love the way he races here. He's more than happy to be out there. He doesn't put himself into the red. He just does enough to ensure that he's in there trying to get consistent points, which is what a points race is all about. Consistency, not necessarily winning every one of them, but ensuring that you place yourself well as Carswell sees himself now dragging things through. Well, the field's reacted, and that looks like it's going to come back together. As we see Redmond Connolly, he's got the red helmet on, and they swing up the track, and uh, this moved, Edward Pawson. 
takes over on the front and it is, it's back together. Lewis Johnson did the work. Zach Patterson will be thanking him for the work he's put in to bring that back together. Ryan McLeod rolls around and goes, well, I lit a couple of matches out of the pack. Jonathan Fish follows him along with Jackson White who scored some points early in the competition. Still on the, still on the scoreboard. So at this race, 32 laps in, they'll come around, they'll get the bell for another sprint. Jonathan Fish, he's got Jackson White on his wheel following him as one of the Canterbury riders, a little bit of a gap back. So Jonathan Fish goes into the bell, Jackson White sitting on him. Jackson White winding up down the back straight. Just sitting on the wheel of Jonathan Fish. When's he going to make his move? Is he going to try and come over the top? But Jonathan Fish, he's just uh, absolutely fine. He goes, no, thanks very much. I'll take the five. White settles for the second. Second, uh, the three points. So he keeps them kicking over. Darcy Sanders in that third position. So Canterbury in the mix here with Mid-South Canterbury in Auckland. So it's seesawing a bit as to who's getting themselves to the advantage of the front of the race here. A few riders just taking a moment, catching their breath, re-evaluating where things are at this point in time. Because when we look at the total points going across the board, there's still a number of riders in contention here. But a few of them would have felt the sting, the wrath of that break happening early on and having to do the chase on. It would have taken the energy out of it. Of course, the best place to be is in that front group at all times, but it's not always available for everybody. As we see the familiar figure of the Mid-South Canterbury rider, Fish taking the five, White the three, Sanders third, and that now puts Patterson at 11. Oh, and it's very quickly off the screen for us there. Sitting in eight, I think, was uh, second place with Jackson White. Van Heenigan in third on five. McLeod also on five. And Fish on five. So very tight indeed at the moment. It's still very much open to a number of riders to take this out. And remember still, the final sprint offers double points. Well, they've been through with 26. They'll come next time down the finish line. Jack Carswell just turning the screws up a little bit following Jack Carswell. Oliver Watson, Palmer. And that little few little gaps opening in the field. There's three riders, another four trying to get across. Then there's a gap. The man from uh, Southland hands on the drops, just dropping the head a little bit. So the race is going to split up. 25. Lewis Johnson is looking pretty comfortable. Joel Douglas swings up the track, goes, well, I'm trying to get something going, but uh, it hasn't stuck yet, so you've got to work. Well, these groups go going through from Mid-South Canterbury, Jackson White, so he's happy the way he's riding, going exceptionally well, ticking over the points. Jack Carswell, he's on the leaderboard as well. There's Jackson White, goes, well, we'll just uh, keep the pressure on. White from Mid-South Canterbury. Comes in, there's 23 laps left in the points race. Not a bad time to hit them. Some of the riders are starting to feel it. They're also starting to think about their next two sprints. So Jackson White clears out. He's gone clear of the field, so he's going for the big one. He's gone from a long way, so that's going to use a fair few matches. Who's going to go after him? Patterson uses the Cote d'Azur to get underneath the Canterbury rider. Goes in, he goes, well, I've got to get after them. Someone's got to try and get this going. He swings up, swings up the track and leaves a... Jackson White, Mid-South Canterbury, number 111, just cruising along nicely out front. They're spread out behind. Who's going to go? They're looking at Jack Carswell, who takes over on the front of that group. But uh, right now, Jackson White, he's got the bell, so he's going to be chasing the five points. Jack Carswell sitting in behind him. Carswell leads the group, the chasing group, but it's a big gap back. And... Uh, being challenged, uh, Carswell's being challenged for the points as well. As we look at Jackson White, there's the... The riders chasing him, they're going for the minor points, the three, two and one. White goes, well, I've got the five and he decides I've gone from three to go. I won't wait, I will wait for them. I'll swing up the track. I've done enough now. Jack Carswell straight away after the sprint, mouth open on the shallow drop bars as well. Let's stretch it out. I've got 19 laps left to hurt them some more. Let's see, we'll get an update on the leaderboard. It's a tight in the, in the 19 men's points race at the Vantage. Windows and doors, elite and under 19 national track championships. Coming to you on Sky Sport next, Dale Woodford, Julian Ineson in the commentary. Well, here we go with Auckland once again, having a bit of a nudge off the front with Joel Douglas. Has a bit of a look, confirmed results, sprint six. Jackson White on the five. Watson Palmer, we see his name start to appear there as well. But as Jackson White now moves into the overall lead on 13 points, Zach Patterson on 11, Jack Carswell on six, Watson Palmer on six, McLeod on five, Fish on five, and Douglas on four. So it's still very tight, still an open race here with only a couple of sprints now remaining. Of course, the double one at the end as Douglas decides, no, this wasn't worth the effort. I'll go back up. He heads back into what's the remainder of this uh, group here. It's reduced quite a bit as all the efforts have gone off the front. 
Jackson White having another bit of a nudge off the front there. His uh, teammate, his centre man in the orange helmet. He has a bit of a look and decides he'll just go on up. He won't be doing any of the chasing there. Not when it's somebody in the same colours as him. Edward Pawson rolling around consistently towards the front. You just get the impression the rubber band could snap at any point in time with these guys here as they continue to pour things on. The surges are starting to have their toll on the bodies of a few. Well, Jackson White is in uh, control of the bike race, goes through. They all swing up the track. Edward Pawson moves through on the bottom. So that's a little bit of patience. 14 to go next time past the lap board. Two more sprints, double points on the last. They're all starting to think about it. Zach Patterson's riding a very smart race. He's let other people cover most of the breaks. So he's saving the energy. He'll try and score some points in the next sprint. Then concentrate on the last sprint. He's there or thereabouts. Jack Carswell in the black helmet will be doing the same. Lewis Johnson's been doing a great work, amount of work for the Waikato riders when uh, he's needed to. He's gone to the front, pulled it in, riding very unselfishly. So Jonathan Fish decides, well, we'll go off the front. It worked for Jackson White. We'll put the other riders under pressure. West Coast, North Island. Well, the rider from the West Coast, North Island, uh, deciding we need to get in the mix. Swings up the track and uh, leaves it to Fish. Lewis Johnson, once again, he's got three from Waikato lined out behind him. So Lewis Johnson doing the work for Waikato. Gets onto the wheel of Fish. Zach Patterson just swings out. Here they so, go, winding it up for another one of the sprints this time round. That was coming of the West Coast North Island, but he's uh, drifted towards the back because this is where the race is happening up front with Waikato Bay of Plenty. Auckland with Douglas coming up onto the wheel. It's Oliver Palmer, Watson, and he's, he's trying to give himself a bit of a challenge here, picking up some points. But the Aucklander will pick it up instead. But very tight still amongst it. There's a lot of the Waikato boys still very much in the mix. The names that we've mentioned time and time again, they are being consistent. They are making sure that they keep themselves to the forefront with each time that the bell appears. And again, Cars will come through. He does a bit of a surge on the front. Just wants to see who can react, who's got the legs on them. And I'd suggest quite a few of them. Those legs are starting to disintegrate on them there. They're starting to change all sorts of colours. McLeod makes himself to the front. Douglas getting the confirmed five points. Watson Palmer the three. Davis the two points. And Patterson the one. In sprint seven here of this under-19 men's points race. Well, Joel Douglas, he's uh, riding a very smart race. And there we see Jackson White on 13. Zach Patterson on 12. Joel Douglas on three. Oliver Watson Palmer nine. Jack Carswell on six. One sprint to go. Double points on the last. They'll all be looking at the leaderboard as they come down. Don't know what they have to do. Who's it going to be? Jackson White. I've been very impressed with the way Zach Patterson's written this. He saved a lot of energy. So he lets Lewis Johnson go off the front. Now this could be a good move. Lewis Johnson. Double points on the last. He's done a lot of work and they've let him go. The little man from uh, Waikato. So he hasn't got the points on the board. There's Edward Pawson, McLeod. So they're all looking for somebody else to do it on the last. Lewis Johnson, McLeod, Doug, yeah, Joel Douglas. So Joel Douglas, he's not frightened uh, to put his nose into the wind. We'll just look back. Where's Zach Patterson sitting patiently on the wheel of Jackson White, just following him around. He knows that's the wheel to watch. So it's uh, Lewis Johnson out in front. They're coming around. They're going to get four laps to go. So there's four on the board. As I look out the window, it doesn't change. So we've still got four laps to go in the race. Four laps to the double point sprint. It's Jonathan Fish, Mid-South Canterbury. Lewis Johnson out front, Jonathan Fish. Who's going to go after them? It's South Canterbury. No, that's just settling down a little bit. Three to go, double points. Lewis Johnson, he's on the charge and uh, that's going to, could shake out the leaderboard. It could decide things. A couple of riders are going to be fighting for the smaller points. If Lewis Johnson, he's got half a lap on them. So three to go, they go past with three. Lewis Johnson's going to come round with two. Move coming from Canterbury. Zach Patterson hasn't moved. Jack Carswell hasn't moved. The riders at the top of the leaderboard. Joel Douglas hasn't moved. Lewis Johnson's chasing the 10. Down the back. Lewis Johnson going after the 10 points. Darcy Saunders goes out as well. So uh, the, the big names on the leaderboard. Carswell sits into fourth position. Oh, there's a big move coming now. Oh, the door opens on the inside for Zach Patterson. Lewis Johnson's going to get the bell. One to go. 
They're going after him. Jack Carswell puts the, opens the turbo down the back out of the saddle. Jack Carswell, he's not going to catch Lewis Johnson. He's going to take the last sprint, the 10 points. Jack Carswell's going to come home in second. He'll pick up the double for second. Then Zach Patterson, Joel Douglas. This race is going to come down to the wire, all right. We'll have to do some calculations. Double points, brave move from Lewis Johnson to take the 10 but you need more than 10 to win the points race. Let's wait to see what the uh, judges give us in the last sprint and what the tally is on the final race of the night. What a classic in the under 19 men's points race. So the calculators will be out now as they start to do the additions here. They'll be looking through the cameras and checking back through it. And of course some riders missing out on points in that last one. Where they get positioned in the sprint though could determine where they get overall yet. So there's a lot of factors to play here. But what a fantastic final sprint. What an outstanding race across the board, folks. Our final race of the night. Would you give it up for our under-19 riders here in their points race championship? As they wind on down, they'll be waiting patiently to see what sort of results are going to end up on the board with those final decisions being made very shortly for us. And we'll be down on the inside of the track in a few moments' time to present the podium for the last couple of events. And we've also got some special trophies to give out as well. For the most points in the competition across certain events. So make sure you hang around and support these riders who have put on another fine performance here. Right across, right across the under-19 and the elites here. On this uh, second to last day of the championship here in Invercargill. Well, it has been a, a fantastic night racing. We couldn't have asked more. Sam Dakin taking out the Kieran Sean Fulton, I think, at the start of the championships. Three sprint events, three gold medals, and, of course, a non-championship. 250 on the opening day. It's been a real pleasure bringing you the coverage on Sky Sport Next with Julian Ineson, Del Woodford. We're going to wait for these results to come up. There's some calculations being done. The graphic uh, hopefully will come up on our screen as we don't have uh, a clear view of the lap board from where we sit. So tomorrow, just a reminder, on Sky Sport Next, we'll be coming to you from 3 p.m. in the afternoon, uh, an earlier start to the session. Tomorrow morning session, we'll have a, some team sprints, some team events, uh, as well as some various qualifying events for the finals in the evening so we'll just go through to my program there we go Lewis Johnson takes 10 Jack Carswell Zach Patterson got up for four Joel Douglas he got two points on the last what's it going to do to the leaderboard we will wait Zach Patterson I think uh, by my calculations will take the title but I'll wait and see So on the board, Lewis Johnson, fine ride to take the last sprint. 10 not, won't be enough, I don't think, to get him up into the medals. So tomorrow, tomorrow morning, elite women's team's pursuit qualifying. Women's and men's team sprint. In the evening, we've got the plenty of racing team sprints. We've got the under-19 men's and women's elimination. The elite women's points race. And the elite men's points race all round out the program. Remember, coming to you on Sky Sport next from 3 p.m. The points race, the final race of the evening where we'll see world champion Corbin Strong wear the rainbow jerseys to try and win the points race in front of his home crowd. But he's got a battle on his hands with uh, probably up to six world champions in the, or former world champions in the field in various events, including the points race and the Omnium. So the judges doing the calculations on the big scoreboard. I can still see the last sprints up. Thanks for watching across the across the country, around the world on Sky Sport Next. It's been a real pleasure bringing you these Vantage Windows and Doors Elite and Under 19 Track Cycling Championships. As we see Tony down there just uh, doing some calculations. Mark Reynolds, Chief Judge, he will be just checking everything, adding things up, making sure it tallies up with the timing system. Everyone's waiting. Waiting patiently. So just run through tomorrow evening's program. We'll be on air from 3 p.m.
First event will be the Elite Women's and Under-19 4,000 metre Teams Pursuit Final. The Elite Men's and Under-19 4,000 metre Teams Pursuit Final. So the centres can combine teams because we may see some composite team rides. The Under-19 Men's and Women's Team Sprint. The Elite Men's and Women's Team Sprint Final and the award ceremonies for those. The Under-19 Women's Elimination Race, always one of the most exciting races on the track, as will the under-19. It'll be a full field. It's a long way, plenty of laps in that race. You saw the points race. You've seen the scratch race, the elimination. That'll be something else. The elite women's points race, the elite men's points race will be the final race on the program. We've got around four hours of 20 minutes. We'll be starting at 3 p.m. and coming to you on Sky Sport next. So the advantage, windows and doors, under-19 and elect. Elite Track Championships, been an absolute pleasure bringing you the coverage from the SIT Zero Fees Velodrome. So we see the judges. There we go. We can confirm the winner of the men's 20-kilometer points race. Zach Patterson on 16. Jackson White on 13. Jack Carswell, 12. Lewis Johnson on 11. Moved himself up into fourth. Joel Douglas, Oliver Watson Palmer, Ryan McLeod rounding out the top seven. Congratulations, Zach Patterson, picking up yet another title in a hard-fought under-19 men's points race final. So Lewis Johnson moving up into fourth. Very good ride. Joel Douglas in fifth. We'll be crossing to Julian Ineson once everything is set down in the centre for the presentations. Zach Patterson, well, he's an impressive rider. He's got a big following. And uh, across in Australia and also in the Waikato, I know one of his fans, Trevor Foley, he'll be delighted. He'll be tuned in. Very impressive. There he is. Nice and relaxed. Nice young man on and off the bike. He was helped out by Ray Sheath, who also will be tuned in. Of course, we're missing him down here managing the Waikato team. It's not quite the same. Just wait uh, for the riders to set themselves for the presentations. They're warning down. That's Edward Pawson on our screen. Rode a very good points race. Sometimes you can ride a fantastic race and it just doesn't go your way. You just don't score the points. There's things don't fall. The brakes don't go when you want them to go. So just remember, you can go back and look at all the coverage if you've missed anything from day one. Let's go back on to Sky Sport Next, and uh, you can see them. Of course, we'll also be bringing you a highlights package. If you've missed the sessions, well, you can tune in for that as well. I see some of the riders heading over towards the presentation those. <laughs> On camera, that's Steve Holdsworth, the Chief Governor's here. Sorry about the delay, those at home. Just stay with us, though, for the presentation. Nice to see the crowd staying in as well.
Because after the big endurance races, the riders are, are keen to hydrate and uh, get recovery. Remember, they ride these 30 or well, 80 laps without a drink bottle. So they'll want to get um, some water into the system and then head over to the presentation desk. Things are all ready to, just about ready to go down there. And uh, thanks very much for watching on Sky Sport Next. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to head down to Julian Ineson for the presentations. Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony for the 2021 Elite Under-19 Track National Championships Under-19 Women's 7.5K Scratch Race will now take place. And the medals will be presented by Glenn Thompson, former Commonwealth Games Points Race Champion. In third place and winner of the bronze medal, representing Canterbury, Amelia Sykes. In second place, and winner of the silver medal, representing Southland, Riley Ackroyd. In first place, the winner of the gold medal, and the 2021 Under-19 Women's Scratch Race National Champion, representing Canterbury, Jenna Borthwick. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for the place getters in the 2021 Vantage Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, the awards ceremony for the 2021 Vantage Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships Under-19 20K Points Race will now take part. The medals again will be presented by Glenn Thompson, the winner of this event in 1991. In third place and winner of the bronze medal, representing Waikato Bay of Plenty, Jack Carswell. In second place and winner of the silver medal, representing Mid-South Mid -South Canterbury, Jackson White. In first place, the winner of the gold medal and the 2021 Under-19 20K Points Race National Champion representing Waikato Bay of Plenty, Zach Patterson. And Zach to receive the Shane Phillips Memorial Trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for the place getters in the 2021 Vantage Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships. Well now, ladies and gentlemen, do about to do the presentation of the combined points over the competition for specific events. The rider that uh, scored most highly across these various events in the elite men's for the elite men's time trial, scratch race, and Kieran. Glenn Thompson, a former Commonwealth Games points race champion, to assist with the presentation. And the winner of the combined points for the uh, competition here at these national championships representing Southland, Nick Kirkazoo. <laughs> Nick receiving the Warranty Johnston Cup. Now we have the presentation of the combined points for the under-19 men's. And again, Glenn to assist with the presentation for the Levin Jubilee Cup. 
and it is a dead heat for 2021. Both riders are representing Waikato Bay of Plenty. This is across the time trial, the sprint, the scratch, and the points race. Folks, put your hands together for Waikato Bay of Plenty's Zach Patterson and Jack Carswell. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're joined by Jenna Borthwick of Canterbury, of course, the winner of the uh, scratch race here tonight. Well, congratulations, Jenna. Another fine effort tonight, a great bit of racing for you. Yeah, thank you very much. Coming into this uh, competition, of course, a lot of riders got targets on the back with their previous performances. You would have a large one. Of course, you've done some outstanding efforts here at the Velodrome before. Yeah, I felt like I had a pretty big target on my back. I was just trying to control the race for a bit there and just trying to find a wheel that could drag me through to the front on my big gear. And there's a, a lot of top contenders, of course, in the mix there. A lot of new riders starting to come up into that uh, age bracket. So, of course, constantly having to reevaluate the plans. Yeah, there's some awesome riders that have just come into the um, under-19s, especially like Amelia Sykes. She's a real strong contender. She got third. It was pretty awesome to race with them, though. And let's talk this briefly about that Canterbury contingent. You've got a very strong contingent of riders, both in the men's and the women's division. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. We all get to train and race together, make each other better. And I think there was like six or seven of us in that race. It was pretty cool, yeah. Well, congratulations on another fine night here at the National Championships. Folks, would you put your hands together for Jenna Borthwick. Joining us now is uh, Zach Patterson, of course, the uh, winner for the uh, points race over the 20K. Well, it was a real seesaw effort out there tonight, Zach. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I had no legs in that last 40 laps. I was just holding on for dear life and then looked up at the board with 10 laps to go and saw, I think I was like one or two points down. I was like, oh, really got to get this now. And, of course, uh, you had a number of your teammates out there tonight, but, of course, all riding as individuals. But, man, there's strong contingent from Waikato once again. Yeah, I think um, yeah the talent coming through through the hub is just um, awesome. You know, we all get to train together most weekends, and every week they're just getting better and better. Not looking forward to racing them next time. <laughs> well, congratulations on a fine effort here tonight on the uh, second last night here of these championships, folks. Would you put your hands together for Zach Patterson? Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for being with us tonight in the stadium and on Sky Sport Next. It's been a real pleasure bringing you tonight's coverage along with Julian Ines and I'm Dale Woodford. Don't forget to join us tomorrow night on Sky Sport Next from 3pm for the final day of the Vantage Windows and Doors Elite and Under-19 Track National Championships. Welcome to the virtual world, Jace. Sit to learn is so many great online courses, bro. Oh, I don't have that luxury fit too, it's too expensive. Bro. Zero fees, kid. Zero fees, kid. Zero fees.